Well, you can hear one of Santa's elves in the background. They're working on something. I bet it's for one of the grandchildren that live next door. But come on in into my back door, my second family entrance. We came in the first family entrance yesterday into my morning room. And you guys have seen this space before. This is just kind of the back stoop. It's where I can store my firewood, things that I need for my indoor fireplace. It's great this time of year because it is shady and it's not freezing, it's just cool. So anything I can't fit into my refrigerator or that I need cooling, like this beautiful birthday bouquet that my friend Jenny brought me today, I can keep that outside. So come on in, pretend like we're gonna sit by the fire and have a cup of tea. So come on in, Stuart can follow me. And welcome to my kitchen. It is not very big, but I think it's pretty cozy. Um, yes, I do have a fireplace, which I find absolutely indispensable. I've said it about a thousand times. I think putting a fireplace in my kitchen and my kids' education is probably the best money I've ever spent. I can't tell you the number of fires we have burned in that fireplace. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that practically every morning I have my coffee down here, even before daylight, and I sit down here and meditate and just enjoy the morning before it's even light outside. So let me tell you a little bit about this space. Um, we bought the house in 1990, and we did some restoration to it. One of those things was the kitchen. We actually didn't do that, however, until 1995. And we didn't change a lot of things, but here are a few things we did change. Number one, we opened this up. This used to just be a very narrow opening that went into a breakfast room. And there were built-ins not unlike what I showed you yesterday in that video, but we just expanded it a little bit. Um, another thing that it was money well spent, we put in this amazing palladium window that looks out into the garden. So I have a pretty beautiful view. So even Stuart just made a face because he's seen this view a lot, um, especially when the viburnum is in bloom. But I have, a, I have a lovely view and I never take it for granted and if you're going to stand here doing the dishes or whatever, it is a nice place to be, I promise. And I have three pots here of some amaryllis that I'm forcing. We did a video on that not too long ago. And these are just all beautiful sticks uh, from my garden. I love the ones that still have some foliage suspended from them. Why I like this is that I can see through them. I love, love the architecture of the branches. Ultimately, they will support the stems and the stalks of the amaryllis. But I really love it because I can see through it. So it in no way impedes or obstructs the view of the garden in the back. Now, before we get started, um, I want to show you a couple of things and maybe challenge you in a couple of things. Since the ice storm, I know you guys are tired of hearing about it, but we're still recovering. One of the things that got kind of messed up was my burglar alarm system. And periodically it just makes these kind of beeps and it did yesterday. It might today. Then again, it might not. I'm not really sure, but I thought we would play a little game as an apology for how obnoxious it is during these videos. And that is that the first person who tells me at the end of the video in the comments how many times it beeped or it didn't beep at all, you're the winner. And I'm going to send you <laughs> one of my new garden calendars that's got it's got the to do the monthly to do list it tells you what to do when these are all images from my garden um, you can buy it off of zazzle but i will send you one of these all you have to do is just uh, instant message me or send me an email with your address and i'll put one in the mail to you again this is kind of an apology for how obnoxious that sound is the second thing that i want to do you guys 
yesterday I, I was just overwhelmed with the number of comments you made so obviously you liked my my bringing you indoors and I guess we'll do a little bit more of it now that it's cold outside if you do please comment below let me know what you like what you'd like to see uh, make sure to subscribe put on turn on notifications give us a thumbs up or whatever it really does mean a lot to us and share with other with others if you think they would enjoy it too now I, I want to do a, sh a shout out because yesterday you guys always leave wonderful messages and you send me emails and everything but yesterday believe it or not um, this one came a few weeks ago but yesterday I got two more cards in the mail from viewers who just wanted to send me a nice note they took the time to literally find out what my mailing address was and write me a sweet note so I want to do a shout out there's a couple down in Texas um, or Fort Bliss Texas and they have just sent me some of the most inspiring supportive message of work that they're doing down there um, and Jane Beavers I, I think it's Beavers she and her husband have sent me such lovely lovely notes and this is one of them and I just want you to know how much I value these and cherish them this has been on my bulletin board I show it to people as a demonstrable act of kindness of unexpected kindness and something that you can do to really positively affect somebody's day so if you think about it um, just send somebody a pretty note today now I want to also show you just a couple of my my favorite things before I talk a little bit more about the room itself this is my favorite Christmas thing ever and it is a wreath box <laughs> that my son Jamer, my younger son who lives in Denver, he did this for me, I don't know how many years ago. And he decorated it in all, look at the little snowman, in all of its childlike innocence. And okay, he did it in 2003 in fifth grade. How sweet is that? And Stuart, if you will kind of turn around and pan around because the wreath is behind you. And I keep it on my kitchen door and it's been supplemented over the years. I've added some different ornaments that are all mostly kitchen inspired, but the, the little um, uh, clothes line, what are those called? Clo clothes line hooks, uh, the word escapes me. Clothes pins, clothes pins, thank you. Um, ornaments that they made when they were little, those are all hanging on there and it just reminds me of him so i may not put out a bunch of other decorations this year but i promise you every year i put out that wreath and i savor my little fifth grade son i miss that fifth grade son though i kind of like him now too um so so come on in let me show you one of the things that we did when we redid the kitchen was obviously we painted the cabinets. These are wood mode cabinets and they have an undercoat of kind of a vibrant red. You can see it here in this glass cabinet. That's the undercoat. And then I actually had some artists slash painters who did the finish. These are all maple cabinets. They did the finish. What I love about it is it's very forgiving. I also love it because it matches, I think, the English style of the vintage, the integrity of this old house. But it's very forgiving. It was very um, forgiving for, let's say, just a family of boys, of my two young boys and my husband, and it continues to be very forgiving and very easy to clean and wipe up. So not an all-white kitchen for me, you guys, but I still love it. I would do it again. I have never once been tempted to repaint it um, since 1995. We put in an industrial range, uh, a wolf range it gets a ton of use I really believe in using what you have inside and out I like the fact that things get a little scuffed up and distressed because that's just 
the signs of a life well lived. And I kind of just don't mind that. Again, it speaks to the English Tudor nature of my house. So yesterday, again, this is a small space, so it's hard to kind of navigate. I am going to shut this door because it's getting kind of chilly in here. And by the way, this is my, my laundry room. When we first moved in, the washer and dryer were in the basement. And the best gift my mother-in-law, who just passed away in February, but the best gift she ever gave me was to tell my young, naive self to bring the washer and dryer up from the basement. So we did that when we moved in. Now, it wouldn't be a kitchen of mine if it didn't have topiary. So this is that silhouette that I just so love. These are my rosemary topiaries that yesterday had a holiday out on my porch because all living plants really, or the kinds I grow, the topiary, they really wanna be outside. Um, they want greater sunlight and a greater exposure to, to the elements than they get inside my dry heated house. So of course I have to have topiaries in here and I love them because they're fragrant. I can clip, clip on them as I cook and I think that's kind of, that's kind of nice. So again, here is, here's my window. Pretty much because I've got so much wood in here, I don't do a lot of decorating inside my kitchen, but what I do are certain wood embellishments. I find that, and I think it was maybe, was it Janice or Brenda who, who was telling me in one of their comments that they find every year they use less and less material things from the store and more and more from their gardens and from nature to decorate their homes. And I do that too. And I do it one, because it speaks to kind of a garden inspired lifestyle, but also because I don't have to pack it and put it away and take it down to the basement afterwards. All I have to do is compost it or put it outside for the birds or whatever. And that makes it very, very easy and um, recyclable in an earthy way. So, but what I do have typically are wooden things. Most of them were gifted to me a long time ago. And I like to position things so it kind of tells a little story. And I think this little wooden vignette here kind of tells a story and you can um, you can compose your own ending for that story if you like. Some other things that are cherished to me, this is another little nutcracker, a little woodworking guy. And he sits on my knife stand. And you guys I know will ask about this knife stand because you've asked about it before. It has a magnet in it. And so I can have all of my knives at the ready. It takes up a little bit less counter space. And I got this on Amazon. And if Stuart will remind me, I'll put the link below. Um, one more thing. So many of you asked me about the link to the taper candlestick that I showed you yesterday. And I got them from Terrain years ago. And I guess they don't offer them anymore. I wasn't able to find a link. Um, or even find a similar product, but I will continue to look. If any of you find it as you're looking, then you might give me a heads up and I'll try to supply that link for you. Um, I love these little hanging peppers. I have these every year. These were gifted to me by my dearest friend, Deborah, who Stuart also knows. Uh, they're, they're friends as well. She introduced me to my husband. She brought this back recently from Santa Fe, and it reminds me of that part of the country that I love so much, Santa Fe and New Mexico and, and Colorado. So another kind of uh, interesting thing about the format of this kitchen You'll notice on that side that the open cabinet is deep and there is enough depth in there for storage for glassware and things. Don't judge me if that cabinet isn't tidy. This one, however, is symmetrical, but it's not deep at all because there's a flue behind here that we had to work around. So this cabinet is very, very shallow and made a perfect spice cabinet. 
The other thing is, this drawer here is just a fake drawer. It's not functional. But again, because we wanted symmetry when we did the kitchen, you'll notice that this one is functional. And I can keep a calendar in there or whatever. It's really, really handy. So that way I have symmetry. I have a little bit more storage in this kind of tiny kitchen. And they even put in these amazing corner cabinets that otherwise wouldn't be functional space. So I really like the, the design of that. This actually looks like granite, but it is marble. And at that time when we installed it, I thought, oh, I'm going to bake. I'm going to do all of these things. And marble is what you supposedly were, were, were it was the optimum thing to have to roll out pastry dough. Well, do I bake? No, I don't. But do I still love this marble? Yes, I do. I really like it. And I repeated the tile detailing from the area around the sink over here on the opposite side. So just like I ha like to have stone steps with brick under risers, I like to have um, these risers underneath my steps or underneath my kitchen counter. Did that make any sense? Kind of, okay, Stuart's nodding his head. Kind of it did in a convoluted way. Okay, so, so this is where we spend, I would say 75% of our time, especially in the winter. And I think that's pretty obvious why. We love this wood burning fireplace. It does have a gas jet. And I showed you that our firewood is just right outside the door. Um, but I want to show you something else. So if you look out here, you can see what a wonderful view my husband has. The, this room used to stop right here. We bumped this out just subtly and put in some French doors and some steps. And let me get out of the way so Stuart can show you what a beautiful vista, what a beautiful view my husband has, because this is his chair right here. So when we've got lights outside, um, when we've got a little fire in my fire grate outside, we can come and go from this French doors. We, from these French doors, we can open them up. We can get a breeze. It's great for entertaining. And these spaces are tight, but I think they're still cozy. So I'm kind of embarrassed to say that most of the time it's at this little table in front of our mom and dad chairs that uh, we eat dinner and breakfast at. It's pretty handy. And when the fireplace is lit, we just don't want to get too far away from the fireplace. Um, most of the time, in fact, when I'm sitting in this room, I'm sitting on the hearth because I just really like the cozy feel of having the warmth on my back. So that is a, a, just a, a seasonal indul indulgence that I just find absolutely delightful, just delightful. So um, usually there's a topiary or something here. Now I wanna, I wanna do a shout out because Stuart, I, and I haven't touched this, and Stuart does have on a mask, you guys. Um, this is a croissant that my friend Deborah, when she bought me, brought me my birthday gift, because today's my birthday, she baked these croissants and I've saved one for Stuart right here. And this is my favorite piece of spode. It's the OG dish. Why it's called that? I have no idea. It's my favorite piece of spode. And usually there's some kind of little goodie on my table for hubs or for Stuart to indulge in. Um, here is Stuart. Stuart's laughing, but he knows I do. I take care of you, Stuart. Um, at different times, I've had different things as a fireplace holder in the past. I have a metal one. I have a, um, uh, anyhow, just different ways that I hold my firewood. I just really like the look of a basket. And this is a plastic trug that I got from Gardener Supply. I'll try to put a link below and it kind of protects the basket because I like the earthy way it looks. Now, something else that I'm kind of funny about. Um, I've already spoken of my affection for fairy lights and someone asked me what color I like and I like the warm white. 
So these are the warm white fairy lights. I get them off of Amazon and I'll put a link below. Every year I have to decorate with citrus and I haven't yet made my clove, uh, clove pomanders, which I will do a little bit later, but I have dried some of this citrus. And when I do a video on the cloved spiked citrus, I will talk about how I, I dry that. I love it because they kind of look like stained glass. I love taper candles. I've spoken about that before. And this time of year, I burn them a lot. I burn them all over my house, but I only burn them where I am. And as soon as I leave that location, I never leave them unattended. And I always blow them out. Because I use so many of them, I like to have them at the ready. And so I keep a picture of them on my mantle. These I get from Trader Joe's. I really like them. They're for the most part dripless. And because I don't like the looks of those plastic fire clickers, um, I like to use long fireplace matches. So I get these off of Amazon. I like the way they look in this little pewter dish that belonged to my mom. And what I did was just cut off the strike pad and put it on the bottom. So then when I light the gas jet, um, I can use the fireplace matches. My husband laughed at me because I, <laughs> I even saved the fireplace match after it's used because I can use it again just by lighting it on one of the candles that I always have lit. So he was making fun of me. He said, you are so much a one of 10 children because you save everything. And yes, that's true. I guess I do. Just make sure that it's really blown out before you put it back in with the other matches or you could have some fireworks going. Um, I do different things on this mantle every year. I have to kind of be careful because it is a very drying atmosphere here because of the fireplace. But I do want to show you these beautiful paper white narcissus. Um, I did a video on that not long ago. Stuart, please put a, a link to this video about forcing paper whites. And I demonstrated my magical elixir to keep them short instead of um, stubby so that they don't flop over. And you can see these already have buds on them and they're just that tall. And I anticipate that before long, these will be in bloom and hopefully short enough so they don't flop over. I've got them growing in gravel, mulched with moss, and then top dressed and adorned with little tiny clementines and more dried oranges. And then the dried wreaths, these are boxwood wreaths. I got these at Trader Joe's. Sometimes I will spray wreaths with wilt proof or something to keep them fresh, but I kind of like the look of these preserved and dried and I don't, I don't worry about that. I, I, I still find them beautiful and attractive in that state. So, uh, so this is this area. Um, over here, this is still kind of a work in progress. I'm decorating this spot, but this is our table decor here. And just like outside, I try to continue a theme or a decor element throughout the space. And obviously that is citrus. So I've mulched these pots. These were just some laurel topiaries that are uh, laurel plants that volunteered in my garden. I think I did a video in a previous YouTube and you can look that up, but I just put them in a topiary form. I've had these for a couple of years. There are a few more of them that are outside, but they kind of look like bay trees. I like the way they look. I've got some big fat amaryllis buds getting ready to come into bloom. And then these are kind of fun. I told you that I love spray paint. And these look like, look like little stone acorns. And these are acorns that I just spray painted with a stone spray. I have a whole bunch of those and I like the way they look. Now, this is something very, very special to me. 
Um, over the years, I have worked with Garden Gate Magazine quite a bit. Uh, Kristen Bean Sullivan, the editor there, I consider a dear friend. We became friends when Garden Gate came out here for their first magazine shoot, and she and I have remained very close. And she sent me these wonderful woodwork, hand woodworked ornaments this year. And you guys, there's a special deal right now, and I'll put the link below. There's a few sets of these left. If you use the code LVHOLIDAY, you can get them at $99 for a set. They come packaged in this sweet box with these wood shavings. They're normally $129, so you can get a really good deal. Um, I ordered these for my friend Deborah, and I just love them. And look, look at this one. It's a topiary. And I think these are so, so sweet. So Kristen, thank you, and I'll tag you, and I'll put a link below. If you want these, you guys, you really need to get on it right away and, and and go to it because they will be gone soon. They're a limited, they're a limited edition. Um, just to demonstrate, it really is my birthday. Uh, look at this cute little ensemble of birthday gifts for my friend, Deborah, my friend who introduced me to my husband, who's been my best friend forever. And then some of you were asking me and I'll, I may or may not do a video, but if not, if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram because in my stories, I've started to put all of my favorite things and readers' favorite things that I get from Trader Joe's this holiday. And one of them, these are absolutely marvelous, you guys. These are brilliant. They're little chocolate-covered fig bonbons. Oh my gosh, they are individually wrapped. Stuart just made a face like, I am so gonna... <laughs> So gonna have one of those after we finish shooting. And I love in the afternoon to have a cup of tea and a little treat. And sometimes this is that treat. Um, here is a little glimpse. We'll save this for another room. This at one time had a door on it, but when we bought the house, this door into the dining room was missing. Some of you commented on my squeaky floors. So if you liked those in um, the morning room, you're gonna like them here. My kids used to complain, however, when they were teenagers that it was impossible to sneak out of our house because all of the wood floors squeaked. Um, but there was not a door here when we bought the house, but I like the intimacy of that. So we replaced it. There was a spot for the door, even though there wasn't a door there. And we put in, I love beveled glass, and we put in a beveled glass paned door. And I'll try to put a link to the online source for uh, glass panes that does beveled glass at a fabulous, fabulous price. I think I mentioned yesterday in the previous vi video that my brother-in-law um, was a naturalist. He collected butterflies and this is a part of his butterfly collection. This is very near and dear. We lost his brother years ago and this is very near and dear to my husband's heart. So I love having these kind of treasured things, treasured things around. Now, again, we're navigating a tight space. So, so this is an area I have not decorated yet and I will get to it when I can, and maybe on Instagram or something, I'll show a video of how I decide to do it. So this is my plate rack. When we moved in, I had this plate rack custom made by a woodworker in Gore, Oklahoma, and had it stained. And so just depending on the season, I kind of decorated in different ways. Now, this is so fun, you guys. These gifts, or the, these little matching Christmas trees. These were a gift from my, Deb, my friend Deborah, who bought them back from Sweden. So when I got these other ones as a gift from my friend Kristen, I thought, oh, I'm gonna do some kind of display in my plate rack with those as the primary stars and the primary elements. I do like to have candles burning in here, but obviously that's not safe. So I typically use battery operated ones. I've got some real ones in here now just for storage because I wanted to remind you that this is another thing I really like to get at Trader Joe's. 
are their pillar candlesticks. And typically I like candles to be in white or natural colors. I'm not generally a big fan of colored candles. So when this is all decked out and decorated, I will make sure to show you, I promise. Um, sometimes in the chandelier, I might put some greeny, greenery, but not this year. Uh, it's just a little bit more simple. So I promise you, if you guys were here, I would so invite you to sit by the fire. We could have um, tea and maybe one of those chocolate covered fig bonbons and we could talk gardening and wouldn't it be lovely. So consider this your virtual invitation to come sit by the fire with me. I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday, a wonderful beginning of December and enjoy continuing to decorate your home over time. Happy holidays. Happy birthday, Linda. Thank you, Stuart. Well, I wanna continue with my holiday home tour and show you my living room, but I thought it might be kind of fun if I revealed it to you from the same perspective that my boys when they were little, and I guess even now that they're big, would see it for the first time on Christmas morning. So they'd come down these stairs. In the past, it would be festooned in greenery and all sorts of different ornamentation. But this year I'm being a little bit more simplified in my holiday decor. It's just my husband and myself staying home and being safe. So I streamlined it a little bit. But I want you to come with me and I'll show you what is revealed to them after Santa came to town. And so here we are in front of my fireplace. The stockings are hung with great care because I've got lots of candles lit and I try to make it as magical as possible. I'm sure you do too. Let me give you a little bit of detail about my holiday decor, a little bit of how Christmas unfolds at my house um, and some of my favorite things, starting with the music that you're hearing. This is my favorite CD of all time. It was gifted to me by my friend Gayla and at the time she said it was her favorite CD. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know I have a real fondness for piano music. And this, and I'll make sure to put a link below, but this is Danny Wright's Christmas. That's W-R-I-G-H-T. I love his piano music. If you want to treat yourself, then make a, a station on Pandora called Danny Wright Holiday because it's absolutely beautiful. It's all piano music. It's quiet. It's lovely. I can work to it and it really sets, I think, a beautiful, beautiful tone. So that is number one. Number two, this is my 1935 house. All of this woodwork is original. And this year I decided pretty much just to go with natural elements. I normally do, but this year I am especially being vigilant about that. You won't see lots of uh, metallic glittery baubles. Um, I, I personally find that uh, a little bit garish for my home, for my home in particular, not necessarily yours. I like to have lots of candles lit. Um, it's candlelight is one of the most indispensable things to me for the holidays and I keep lots of Trader Joe's dripless candles on hand at all times because I really love the way they light and the way they burn and they're inexpensive. So you can see that the mantle is just decorated with greenery, with arborvita and some juniper that's all cut from my garden. Um, I love showing not only the greenery, but part of the limbs themselves. And I like the way that they kind of frame whatever it is I'm trying to highlight. I have a whole collection of pine cones. Again, pine cones are one of the indispensable things to me over Christmas time. I have a couple of tubs 
filled with them of all different sizes. These long, large sugar pine cones I actually got in Lake Tahoe a hundred years ago. And all of these uh, dried pomegranates I've had for years. I save them from one year to the next. Sometimes they come out at Thanksgiving and sometimes they come out at Christmas time. Now, one of the magical things that happens uh, on Christmas Eve is that these pretty stockings, these twall stockings that I have here, will be switched out with my kids' traditional stockings that I have needle pointed or that they think of as their very own. That way they're kind of not tempted. These are just the pretty ones. I like to fill them with pine cones and greenery. A little bit later on, I'll show you that I also like to wrap tiny little gifts in whatever my um, thematic gift wrap is for the season and tuck them in there along with candy canes and things. I'm dispensing with some of the candy and things this year because, uh, for well, for obvious reasons. One thing that's very traditional at my house that always gets wrapped as if it's a real gift and tuck in, tucked inside their stockings are those old Lifesaver books that you used to get when you were a kid. Remember when you would do the classroom exchange? Stuart's nodding his head and that was always the best gift that you could get were those lifesaver books. So as a nod to the past, both my own and my boys, I always get them a lifesaver book, even now as adults, and wrap them and stick them in their stockings. So I, one, another thing that I find indispensable are these little battery operated tea lights. I have them everywhere in my living room. I'll try to put a link to le below. I buy them off of Amazon. They actually have a remote control that goes along with them. So it makes them very easy to turn them on and off, especially because I've got them tucked into all sorts of, of tight little spaces. So that's basically my mantle. I do want to tell you something very special is one of my most prized possessions and that's this Shapiro oil painting and let me give you a little story about this um, it's actually been restored when my husband and I I think two or three weeks after we met someone broke into his home and torched it they stole all of his electronics stole all of his valuables and then they torched his home and I was actually babysitting his cat. I went over to feed his cat and there was a fireman standing in the front yard and I had to call him in Austin to tell him that his, uh, his home had not burnt to the ground, but it had suffered a lot of damage. It was the first time I talked to his dad on the phone. Um, and so every time, and he also was so calm when I told him. So whenever I look at this painting, I'm so pleased that we were able to restore it. It reminds me of how calm my husband is in a crisis and the loving way that his father responded to me from the very beginning. So I just wanted to share that uh, little story with you because it really means something to me. So come over here with me. Now, first of all, you can see my kind of out of place TV. I'm very much uh, in Sapotico with Brian Branton who did his home tour yesterday because in these older homes, there's just not really a lot of good places to put your, your TV and they kind of stick out like a sore thumb. For years, I resisted having a TV in my living room, and then I realized that what that did was just relegate my living room to wasted space, and that is just not, that doesn't make sense. All rooms of your home should be lived in. So I put a TV in here, um, and now we can lounge on the couch. It's fun, it's a gathering place. Old homes in general are not good for TV viewing, especially with a crowd. But we go to my friends with more modern homes for that kind of activity anyway. But it's kind of cozy to sit here in front of the fireplace and watch a movie. Oh, one other thing, let me backtrack. This is a gas burning little furnace. It is an antique that came with the house. It sets into the inset of where the fireplace would be. In these 1930s houses, they didn't have wood burning fireplaces. The one that I have in my kitchen, we actually installed ourselves. But this gives us great heat. It has saved us through multiple ice storms when our power went out. It creates a really nice, um, a nice 
warm atmosphere, I think, that's very, very cozy. It's a great source of comfort to us. Now, I, I have this lit for you right now, but that's only because this is special. I also have my concrete Santa over here that was given to me by a client years ago with another candle. In real life, I would not have this furnace lit with any of this in front of it because for obvious reasons um, I'm, we're pretty scared of fire around here. Um, one other thing that might be fun for you to know, I think this is a wonderful idea. If any of you have really old magazines um, or new magazines that will become old and you're trying to kind of clear some things out of your house and gift them to someone else. This is a great idea. My husband visited a childhood friend of his in Colorado not too long ago who has a huge inventory of these old life magazines that are just really too precious to discard offhandedly, I think. So whenever anyone comes to visit him, he asks them what their birth year is and their birth month. And if he has an issue that relates to that or his, that his birth year, then he will give them that or the issue that is closest to their birth date. And I think it's just a wonderful nod to history and a great way um, to kind of share your things with others that you find valuable. And my husband looked through the whole thing. He got a dose of history and also a little flashback in time. Now, let me show you this. This is the vestibule. This is actually my front door. All of these rounded, architectural deta details are original to the house. And it's a, a little vestibule, even though we don't use our front yard a lot, or our front door a lot, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Number one, this is kind of exciting, don't tell, but I've got a tub in here that contains, wrapped up very carefully, um, Jamie's, my husband, Hub's mother's china that we're gonna gift to my son and his fiance for Christmas time. They have always loved it, and I've got it kind of stored in here and here's my old-fashioned mail slot and then this is kind of a fun little detail this is a little window peek so you could see what guests were at your, at your door before you opened the door itself and look at that isn't that magical it's actually snowing outside Stuart see if you can pan over from my perspective I love being able to look outside and seeing my neighbors holiday decorations and when the tulips are in bloom I sometimes come to this front door and just peek through this little window I find it absolutely charming it's one of my favorite things in the house now, if you come this way you can kind of see a vantage point of the steps again and how my boys would come down the steps now come this way and let me talk to you a little bit about these bookshelves now these are actually reproductions but they hold some of mine and my husband's very favorite books. Um, they're just prized. This is where I keep all of my children's favorite books from when they were little, if you give a moose a muffin. That way I know which ones I want to save for them when they're older. There, that's very Christmassy. And when they were here and when they were little, then I would pull out all of the holiday ones, whatever the season was, and I'd put them on my coffee table. Let me show you something else. This is my favorite picture of myself and my boys when they were little, right in front of our enormous oak tree in the front. So you can see another reason why when anything happens to that oak tree, I get so upset. It's not a very pretty picture frame. I need to change that out. 
but these are just some things that are really valuable to me. Another thing that they house, my son um, has a degree in literary translation and he speaks fluent Hindi and some Russian and a lot of his prized texts that um, are in Hindi and are in Russian, we keep in here. And just our most valuable, some of our most valuable possessions, some of my husband's, he's, he's got a degree in anthropology, so some of his artifacts we keep in here. And then again, I like to use a lot of these little tea lights, and I like the way that just a few of them scattered in here kind of illuminate the space. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I, I didn't spend as much time as I normally spend decorating my living room, uh, but I'm not going to pretend that creating something like this doesn't take some time. It does, and I do it over a period of days. I do a little bit every day, partly because I have to fit in some work in there, but also because I find that like my garden, it's an organic process, and I kind of come up with an idea, and then I enjoy that thematic kind of just um, revealing itself to me over time. So this year, my initial point of inspiration was some gift wrap that I saw and I'll show it to you and actually also the storm damage from my tree it um, reminded me of how precious our woodlands are and um, and so I used some of, of things that were precious to me in my Christmas decor so you can kind of see over here the woodland theme that I've got. This is normally my book table. Um, if you want to go back in time, you can see the video that I did where I found this broken pot. And I loved its kind of, oh, it looked like ruins. And I loved the way it looked. So I filled it with some wonderful amaryllis from Color Blends. You can see that they are just about, this is one of the most magical things at Christmas time for me are these big, fat, voluptuous buds. And these are gonna be absolutely gorgeous. I believe these are double delicious. I got these from Color Blends. And then I have just festooned the entire arrangement with some eucalyptus branching that dries beautifully. Lots of my prized pine cones. I've top dressed it in some sheet moss that I got from my florist. And then because I always like things to have a little bit more stature, I elevate it on a plant stand, on a metal plant stand, which also provides a support to wrap some of the greenery and the little fairy lights that I like so much. And then I think also that kind of speaks to this woodland theme are these large antlers. This is kind of a fun way to reuse and repurpose something. This is a little salt, or excuse me, cream and sugar set that was given to me by my sister-in-law. It's an antique and I've just placed some votive candles in here and I am using it to hold some tea lights. Here are some of those paper white nice narcissus that I forced. And I'll put a link below to these wonderful little supports that you can get off of Amazon. They're very inexpensive. I think I got about six of them for just under $5. And they are a wonderful support for all of my bulbs. You can see the other pot of bulbs I did over here. And then Stuart, if you can show in the back, there's one of my free topiaries of just a laurel that I dug up from my yard. You've seen them before outside in my garden. And I top dressed it with some sheet moss. And here is the wonderful gift wrap that I got that looks like, like deer fur. And I like it to wrap my gifts and have them be part of the decor itself. I've got little bips and baubles and twigs and things that I decorate the package with. And it kind of, again, just served to inspire the rest of what's going on here. Now this is definitely a gardener's tableau. 
This Christmas tree, I think I told you I was inspired by a very tall, slim, cylindrical shape this year. And so that is the shape that I adopted for my Christmas tree. This is a Fraser fir. And at the end of this video, I'll put a practical, it'll be kind of a double feature. I'll put a practical um, addition here where you can see how I set up my Christmas tree, the Christmas tree stand I used so that I could place it in a basket because I wanted that organic feel. Not a lot of Christmas decorations this year. They're all pine cones, a few lights, some cotton bowls. These are all rose hips that actually came out of a birthday arrangement that my friend Jenny gave to me and I've repurposed them here. And then I've got just a very few ornaments on here that look kind of like snowy deer and lots and lots of pine cones. So this year I was very simple. I also tucked in here some of, I told you another indispensable thing to me is spray paint during the holidays. So some of the leaves and things that I've spray painted, some of which I save from year to year, I tucked into the foliage. It looks almost as if it's blown in there. And I like the way that that looks. Periodically also, if I want it to look as if it's a bit uh, snow kissed, I'll tuck some cotton and things into the pine cones to make it look as if they are just, um, there's a whisper of snow on them. So back in here, I've got some more evergreens. That is an Arizona cypress that I got at Whole Foods this year that will later be relegated to the outdoors, a lemon cypress. This area in here, because it's close to the window, stays very cool. I make sure to keep them watered. Um, it gets bright light because this is a southern exposure. So I can keep these in here for a couple of weeks before they have to go outside and show any signs of distress. Again, I've got some battery operated lanterns and things that are back in here. Um, I also love magnolia pods. So I have some magnolia pods that I use to decorate my packages. And here's some little acorn tops that have been spray painted. That's that wonderful Dragon Prince Cryptomeria from Southern Living. I'm actually, that's part of a gift and I'm gonna do a video to show you how I sometimes gift plants in baskets and things. This is a really fun idea. This is a, an, another amaryllis with one of those stands or supports on it. And then this is a little seed starter that I've put some snips in from Bridgetown Tools. I'll put links below. But this is part of a gift that I'm gonna to give to my kids and I'm gonna fill it with succulents. And I think they'll really, they'll really like that because they're very, they're very young and hip and, and so many of you young viewers are really into succulents and things, and things like that. Here's another one of my free topiaries that I dug up from outside. I think I have about five of these. There were cherry laurels that just the birds planted. And this is a little juniper with some tiny little pine cones. And then in keeping with the packages being part of the decor, you can see how I've got another giant pine cone on there with some more of that eucalyptus foliage. So also, let me point out to you um, my dining room that's not yet decorated. And if you guys like these kinds of videos, I'm outside of my comfort zone a little bit coming inside. Um, Stuart does the best he can with lighting and everything in my old house with its mahogany woodwork. But if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe, comment, share it with your friends. Let me know what you think. And more importantly, I love it when you share. I can't always respond to every comment, but I promise you I do read them. Please let me know some of your very favorite things, your very favorite Christmas music. Um, one of your, of your very favorite Christmas memories, um, one very special tradition that may not be 
the norm, you know, something other than just making cookies or whatever, but some tradition that's really special to you and your family, because it's those kinds of things that I think make the holidays, uh, in some ways for some people, the best time of the year. Uh, I, I really think it creates kind of a beautiful tableau. A couple of other things before I sign off. Um, Stuart, if you could just point to that map that's in the corner over there and the arrangement of different natural oh, biblos that I've got up there, those are all spray painted treasures that I've had for years. I spray painted them in gold and over the years they've aged and gotten more burnished. And I love the way they almost look like carved wood. Such an easy thing to do. These are treasures that I put in the same place every year and I love the way they look. And again, all of that was just a gift of mother nature. They were just all forged items that I found and tried to kind of transform in some, some kind of magical way. I leave them up all through January because I think they look so beautiful. And then in the spirit of Christmas, I'm gonna close um, just showing you a, a couple more practical, practical things and, and treasures that I have. Uh, number one, you may be wondering pragmatically how I can keep all of that watered without disturbing the entire tableau. And look at how beautiful it looks with that snow in the background. I planned that. I planned that just for you guys. So I want to show you this. This is a Christmas tree funnel, a Christmas tree watering device. And all you have to do is just stick it through the foliage of the Christmas tree down into the Christmas tree holder and you can water it. And I can water all of these things without disturbing the entire tableau. It works brilliantly. Um, I'll try to put a link below. And then I want to show you one other thing that's really special to me. And I was gonna put some greenery on these portraits this morning to finish this room, but then it snowed and I didn't, and I didn't get out there. But I wanna show you two images that I think are, are, they're special to me and I think they're very, it's very serendipitous. This is my husband's father, Bud, Bud Vodder, a really handsome man. He was a B-17 bomber pilot in World War II as was my father, coincidentally, also another handsome man. And they were in the same training location, unbeknownst to them, this Oklahoman and this Indiana Hoosier. They trained in the same area in Texas, literally within weeks of one another. And we discovered that a little bit later um, after my husband and I got engaged and we were just talking about our family histories. They're both gone right now, but I love these, these old fashioned portraits here. They're really special to me, as are you. So thank you for coming into my home, um, into my little world. I hope you enjoyed it. It's not the garden, but it definitely has the feel and the flavor of a garden home at Christmas time. Thank you all. Merry Christmas. Sydney, are you home? Come in. Sydney. Hey, how oh are you? Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Thank you so much for doing You're this welcome. for us. Welcome back. Now, is Tony going to join us today? Not today. Okay. Well, you guys know this is my friend Sydney that lives just down the street. We did a garden tour of her fabulous garden yes. not very long ago, and everyone just loved it. We enjoyed it. And of course, they wanted to see the inside of your house. So I've been campaigning and pressuring <laughs> you. It's okay. Because her house is just absolutely darling. You are, what, six houses mm -hmm. down from me to the west or whatever, if you're familiar with my street. And we both just are really passionate about our neighborhood and, yes. we, love, and we love Crown Heights. Okay, so here's my question of the day. I anticipated this was going to be the case when I came in, and then when I was greeted by this incredible wreath on your front door, 
I, I feel compelled to burst out and root off the red nose reindeer <laughs> or one of those, those kid specials that was on with those animated puppets. But here's my question of the day. When you guys decorate, do you consider yourself retro decorators where you're really retro and back into the decor of when you grew up or if so how much of that do you incorporate into your holiday designs or not are you more and it doesn't matter when you're born if you're young if you're old or whatever whatever you consider to be retro from your childhood because even though I'm a lot older than you, man, so much of your stuff is a flashback. Yes, so I would say I don't consider myself self retro for my age. Growing up, my grandmother had Hallmark ornaments. That was her thing. She didn't have anything like this necessarily. Um, but my mom did have a collection of vintage ornaments from this era that she gave to me probably uh, 10 years ago yeah. at this point, and it just kind of grew from there. Yeah, this, so. this pink and turquoise yeah. would be will be coveted by many, many, many. Okay, let's come over here. First of all, I, I have done you guys a little bit of a, of a disservice by not doing a, a house tour before we did a holiday tour because her home is so charming. I say your home. Yours, Tommy's and Tucker's yes. home is just so charming. It's so youthful, so eclectic, and so vibrant that we may have to come back mm -hmm. when the holiday decorations are down. You're more than welcome. But Sydney and I, I think, became friends because we are both lovers of thrifted yeah. items. And how much would you say in your home, in its regular decor and of your holiday decor, how much of it would you say is thrifted, gifted, or secondhand? Um, probably 98% of everything in our house is secondhand, thrifted, gifted, um, like with the exception of things like, you know, bedding and things like that. Yeah. So yeah. pretty much everything else is furniture, all of that, so. And you're a big shopper on eBay mm -hmm. and Facebook Market mm -hmm. and all of those kind of places yep. in, addition to, in addition to thrift stores. But I digress. Look at this magnificent tree. So I'm assuming, given that it's flocked, it's an artificial tree. It is real. Oh, it is yeah. real? It's a real tree, yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I stand corrected. Where did you get this? Um, TLC. So we don't always do a real tree. Um, we do have an artificial one that is also flocked, but I decided to go the real tree route this year, and I love the smell. And when I went to TLC and saw that they flocked, I was like, we're going to go with you real this year. You had to have it, mm -hmm. yeah. And, yep. it's, and it's a large tree, and it fits perfectly in here. And it looks so perfect it does look artificial yeah it, and you know the real trees are a little bit of an investment I would say for a one month time yeah. period yeah. Um, and that's honestly why I haven't gone that route before um, but I did buy a little bit of a shorter tree and put it on this brass box beneath just to save some extra money so well, and you know, you would never know. Plus, if it were on the floor, it wouldn't showcase. Hello, Tucker. And I would love to pet you, but Stuart and I are both so allergic, but you, we can uh, we can look at you adoringly. <laughs> he's very, he's so social, so. He is precious. But I was starting to say that if it were on the floor, you wouldn't be able to showcase this great tree skirt. Right, yes. Quite so well. Gosh, so many of these are pa in pastel colors. That... Uh-huh, that's kind of, I like that color palette when it comes to, you'll see some of the rest of the stuff. A lot of it's pastel, a lot of it's pinks, purples. Um, those are, that's kind of my color palette. That's when I'm thrifting stuff or um, like looking at stuff on eBay, I tend to gravitate towards those pastel and colors. And you've got some incredible and I think I've asked you before, are you part Native American? Yes. 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 Because look at some of these ornaments. These are just, did you find these at all different locations? Um, I find a lot of my ornaments on eBay. Um, these in particular, oh, like this um, Native American one, those are all um, really old. This one right here, that's actually a replica. Um, you would be shocked at how much true antique like Native American ornaments go for. It's kind of crazy. I, I can yeah. imagine how coveted they are 
and your collection is exquisite. Did you get them piecemeal? Did you mm -hmm. get them all at one time? Just over the years, anything that I've seen that I liked that was priced appropriately or within my budget, I kind of pick it up here and there. And um, I will pick up vintage Christmas all year long, not just necessarily around the holidays, yeah. although it's most available during the holiday season. So. And this incredible garland is that also yeah mercury glass all very fragile i break a couple instruments a year and i want to cry <laughs> <Ooh>. so uh -oh. <laughs> that's okay and so someone had said in my last video they said i can't believe that you would touch people's ornaments without permission <sighs> to me that's part of the experience yeah. of Christmas is the tactile nature yeah. of it and touching the little felt things. But that said, I did ask Sydney's <laughs> permission beforehand if I could touch her ornaments. Um, she knew I wouldn't touch Tucker though because <laughs> we would start sneezing. Well, this is absolutely exquisite. It's gorgeous. Uh, I, I really, it is so exquisitely beautiful and symmetrical that I would have assumed it was artificial. It took me a long time to pick it out. I spent about two hours at DLC and finally the guy was like, okay, can we help you pick out a tree? And I'm like, well, I'm not quite there yet. So Will you leave while, this up until New Year's? Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. And the bow on top? Mm-hmm. Vintage. Yep. Wow. Okay. So let's come over here to this. It just is so perfectly youthful and it's so you. So describe a little bit about what's going on here in addition to your personalized stockings. I'm interested in that right now. So these stockings were actually made by my mother-in-law um, probably five years ago at this point. I had told her that I wanted some vintage looking stockings and she offered to make them so I went and picked out some kits um, and she made those for us and they're part of my one of my favorite things um, that we pull out every Christmas. Um, and then above that, all of these are vintage putts houses, P-U-T-Z. Um, and they're light reflectors. These are also vintage. I mean, I could keep saying vintage, but almost everything in here it is vintage. It would be so. a full-time job acquiring all of this stuff. So how many years have you been? Probably, I've probably been collecting vintage Christmas for right after i got out of college so maybe around 10 years oh, well wow. not 10 years but at least seven i would say and where do you where do you store all of this um i have a very organized um boxing situation down in our basement and i put them all in there i put each individual ornament up in its own little space wrapped so I try not to break everything. It takes longer to put it up than it does to put it out. Yeah, the, so. does Tommy help? Yes, he does. Cause he, I, he tries not to touch anything fragile so that it doesn't break, but yeah, he, he's very helpful when it comes to putting everything up. And this is very clever how you've got the vintage boxes, some of them on display along with the bulbs themselves and these cute little fairy lights, multicolored fairy lights in here with with Santa sending out a message from the fireplace. Yes, so I like vintage packaging too, so you'll see a lot of the things that I have are in their original packaging and I decorate sometimes with just the boxes. Um, and then in the picture down there, that is a vintage Firestone advertisement for Christmas and you'll see a couple of those around um, in frames in, in the rest of the house. Oh, but. wow. So these, these are kits. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was such a thing. Where do you get kits like this? You can get them at like Hobby Lobby or um, just any craft store, Michaels or something like that. But um, there are some actual companies that are still in business from back in the day. Some of the vintage um, stocking kits, the companies are still in business. So, Well, if you're interested in vintage, obviously Sydney is a wealth of information. Now let's travel over here to this. First of all, what kind of bureau is this? Um, I don't know exactly what this was for. The drawers are just empty. It's not, doesn't have any filing cabinet rails or something. So I don't know exactly what it was used for. Um, but my mom actually found it on Craigslist forever ago in Austin. She lives down near San Antonio and she went and picked it up and she had it in her house for a long time. And then I kept begging her for it and begging her for it and she finally gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> she, 
she so, couldn't she couldn't say yeah. no to her own daughter. So this is a weird thematic, Stuart. We've got another fabulous bird's nest fern here amongst this decor. Look at look at this wreath. How wonderful is that? That's a Dresden wreath. Um, vintage Dresden was made in Germany back in the day. Wow, that is beautiful. And you've got more of these little houses, mm -hmm. putts? Putts, houses, putts, yes. P-U-T-Z. Yes. And are they of, from the 50s, the 40s? Um, probably 40s, 50s. Yeah. Somewhere in those, in that range. I can't imagine how much this collection is worth. Vintage Christmas is getting harder and harder to find, and it's getting more and more expensive. Yes. Yeah, I, when we were at Mockingbird Manor recently, mm -hmm. we were looking at some, some of the vintage pieces, mm -hmm. and I couldn't believe yeah. how prized they are. So these little embellishments mm -hmm. here, are these ornaments? Or um, do they clip on? They're just vintage picks. So um, if you look at them here, they just have little wires. So you could put them in like little corsages or um, in like little arrangements. They used to sell a bunch of just individual things like this so that you could put everything together how you wanted it and make your own Christmas decorations. Yeah, or, or lapel pin, yep. or on a corsage, mm -hmm. or earrings, or or whatever. And look at these pine cones on this tinsel tree and that sweet little wreath. Oh my word. Now, I kind of have a weakness for pine cones. I have big pine cones. I have small pine cones. I have a bunch of pine cones downstairs that I don't even have out. I have a bunch of those, so... And it's all very, very colorful, and you've got the perfect colorful backdrop. So here's a wonderful takeaway idea for decor, and that's you've got candlesticks with just little mm -hmm. bobbles as finials on top. Yep. And those are, those are things that, that you can get from, say, Target. So these candlesticks are from Target. They were cheap. Um, they're red. They match, you know, uh -huh. Christmas. And so I would just pick those up occasionally. And it gives you something to, to stick to display, ornaments and yeah. display things on. So. And at, everywhere I look, there's something else. Stuart, can I get you to backtrack for just a moment? Look at this miniature little tree skirt. That is just the... It doesn't really surprise me because I know how detailed and fastidious you and Tommy are based on on your garden and how you maintain things. Mm -hmm. But the degree of attention to detail for all of your, what I call little stories mm -hmm. that you make is so dear. There's a wonderful needlepoint stocking here. And I like the way there was great discussion going on on a holiday video mm -hmm. tour we did recently. And that is, it looks to me like you just layer your holiday decorations over what is already existing in place. You don't put up what is there. You just lay, overlay yeah. your holiday decorations. Some things I have put up, um, if I put it up and thought, this looks a little much because I would consider myself a maximalist when it comes to Christmas decorating. <laughs> no. um, and so there are some things I put up, not a lot, but a few things. So. Well, it, it all is just incorporated beautifully into what you've got going here. Would you say that every year you add to your collection? Mm -hmm. Yes, by a couple pieces. And I've tried to, at this point, kind of narrow it down to things that I really, really like because I have a bunch of Christmas stuff at this point. Um, and so I kind of, I guess, try to keep myself in a certain color range. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, and like a lot of pinks I see as, mm -hmm. as a, th a, theme, a theme. Does Tommy share your love a vintage Christmas, he, or is it he has adopted? He he likes that's a, it. That's a little spool of thread. Mm -hmm. 
And those are, again, those are just picks like the flowers um, that you saw over here that someone at some point has put two together and ran through a spool of thread, so. How very, very clever and, and really colorful. Okay, let's come in here and this is just a sitting room. Be careful, Stuart, don't, don't trip and just jolts of color everywhere with great sun. This is one of my favorite rooms in the house. We spend a lot of time in here um, and we really, this is one of the reasons that we bought the house because we liked this room this a lot. Room. Yeah. yeah, isn't yeah. it funny what things really speak mm -hmm. to you when you look at these old houses? You've got what looks to be a pretty wonderful collection of I like, albums. I like vinyls. And do you actually play them? Yes. I'm imagining you probably yes. do. And then you've got great pillows and you're a girl who is not afraid of color. No, I like color a lot. And I also like some designs that don't have color, you know, on Instagram and things mm -hmm. like that. I just could never do it. But I, li I like a, a monotone color palette, but I can never do it. Well, I think it speaks to what is a, a real overarching philosophy of mine. And that's just, there's many forms of beauty mm -hmm. and you select one that speaks to you and that you can live with. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that I like, but I don't know that I could maintain it right. or I could, I could coexist with it on a daily basis. Yep. But there's, there's no right or wrong form nope. it's just personal expression my philosophy is if i like it i get it and it all somehow seems to work together so well it's I, I was talking to someone yesterday and she came up with this phrase well actually do you know chris up at date with iris no uh, the flo uh, florist just up the street and she said um she said chaos is a pattern mm -hmm. and when you have a lot of things and they're all colorful that all of all of that really melds beautifully together and yeah. becomes a pattern in and of itself yeah. not that this is chaotic but there is just an, an explosion of color yeah. and hues and it's definitely not everybody's style but it's my style and um, I like color and I like old vintage things and and that's how I buy based on what I like that's pretty much it well there's no it's, rules for me no rules and it's important to important to point out you have no children correct and mm -hmm. you and your cat has great dexterity uh-huh yeah he's actually pretty good a couple of people have asked us how do you have a cat with all of these breakables and the only thing he does is get underneath the tree and drink the water out of the <laughs> out of the tree basin but other than that he's He's not really interested in any of the Christmas stuff, so we're excited about that, considering they're shiny and they move, so. So of all of, of these things, do mm -hmm. you have specific collections or specific items that is near and dear to you especially? Um, I really, one of my favorite things that I have is my Native American vintage ornaments, mm -hmm. although not all of them are antique or vintage. Um, a handful of them are, and those are things that I really look to collect every year um, if they're within my price range, but sometimes you just have to get lucky and hope that nobody else sees them or you find them in a yeah. state sale, because they're getting to the point, like you mentioned earlier, that it's getting kind of outrageous that some of the vintage Christmas stuff. Have you been to the mind. new Native American Museum? Up here, I yeah, I'm wondering if they'll be, you know, carrying some interesting, mm -hmm. maybe in That's some cases, point. handmade Christmas decorations. It I'll would definitely it be worth checking out, I think. I just love all of these. This sweet little tree is just precious. And I think that, like so many things, each thing is special individually, but as a collection, it reminds you of almost a stored display yeah. back in mm -hmm. that era. Yeah, and I like I said, I have a lot of um, this um, Santa on a donkey over here. It actually has, it's a Purina advertisement, oh and it gosh. has a little sheet that says pull, and if you pull it out, it, un, it unfolds, and you can see the options that Purina had for Christmas, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. Boy, that, 
I, I don't know that I, I could place where I have seen that little red reindeer, but somewhere in the vestiges of my past, that red reindeer. You've run across it? Yes, made an appearance. And the little, the little candles and, and it all blends so beautifully with all of your colorful artwork and needlepoint. And Latina treasures. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. Okay, so shall we progress now? So some, I, I'm gonna guess people will kind of want to know how, how big is your house? Um, it's right at 1750 square feet. So we're not, we don't have a big house. Um, but yeah, right at 1750-ish. So one of the motivations, if you go back and you read about the history of Crown Heights, is that when they were developing this area, they had two-story homes, they mm -hmm. had grander homes, they had smaller bungalows yep. like this, yep. and they were, it was meant to be kind of a multi-generational neighborhood mm -hmm. that would accommodate all different types of living. They're Singles still getting that right. And, yeah, yeah. And, and still getting that right yep. because the, I would say the, the demography of our neighborhood, the demographics of our neighborhood are still very mm -hmm. much that. Yeah, I agree. Young singles mm -hmm. and young families mm -hmm. and... And you know, it is, it is pretty tight. We do rearrange the living room to accommodate the tree over there. Even though the chair is still a little tight, we usually have our couch over there. So because of the limited space that we work with in here, we... Um, we have to rearrange the furniture yeah. for, for Christmas decorating. So Well, it's, it's obviously very, very much worth it because it's spectacular. So let's look at some more appointments in here. Stuart was salivating over this light fixture. This was here when we purchased the house, so I can't take credit for that. Whoever, whoever redid the home and chose the light fixtures did a very good job. And I like all of the light fixtures in this house. I would guess this was also tugging at your heartstrings mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. when yes. you first bought the house. Yes. So here's another, you are a person who likes mm -hmm. furniture with lots of I like drawers. drawers. Yes. yes, and I, I actually bought that off Facebook Marketplace um, and I asked Tommy if he would build the wood surround for it and um, he, he built the wood surround for me and we made it into a little cabinet. Would, so. would this have been something for mail? Yes, I think it was like a card catalog. Card catalog mm -hmm. for, at a library? Because if you, if you actually open the drawers, it's meant to stand vertical. It's not meant to, to go sideways, but I like it sideways and don't have the room for something like that vertical. So it's very heavy also. I bet. As you can imagine. So. And all of this, this wonderful collection of stars. Did you put these stars on their wooden bases? Tommy made those wooden bases for me because I needed something to display those on without them falling over and breaking. So Tommy is a handy He's guy. handy. He can do a lot of things, yeah. And look, look at that. Santa Mobile. I, I'm really revisiting. Even prior, even yeah. a, even a time prior to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, a lot of this stuff looks like it's 40s. It, it, yeah, I think it probably ranges. I actually have a, when we go into the hall here, you'll be able to see I have um, like a little Christmas catalog. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's from 1912. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Look at that Santa's expression. Better watch out. Santa can some, see you. And some of the older Santas can be a little creepy looking. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And I have a couple they, other Santas, and Tommy's like, I don't think we can put this one up. <laughs> okay, so, Stuart is laughing at me because I went through lots of my my bins mm -hmm. of Christmas decorations, and he accused me of, of having at least one, maybe two really creepy mm -hmm. Santas, what yeah. he considered to be really they exist. <laughs> really they're creepy out there. Santas. I, I think they're kind of in that same category of some really creepy clowns. Yeah that just, um, I don't know. Yeah, some of them are too much for me. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah a little bit nightmarish, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And some of these pieces, are any of these things you have candles? Because some of them look like they might even be made of wax or, um, they, or candles. They aren't candles. Um, anything that's plastic like this that you'll see is a vintage glow mold that is meant to have a little light, light in the back. In mm -hmm. 
and look how you've just got, boy, if I were wanting to develop um, a whole collection of vintage ornaments, mm -hmm. I would hire you. <laughs> I would hire you to, to be my acquisition. I like looking for stuff. Point I like person. To, to, to source it, to find it. That's half the fun, fun for me. For you. Yeah. And it's, it's a skill set, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. It takes a lot of time looking online and, and things like that. And like I said, if, you, if you're looking for vintage Christmas stuff and, and you want to acquire um, a lot of things in a short amount of time, estate sales are great. If yeah. you can run into an estate sale with someone that had, you know, a big collection of vintage Christmas, mm -hmm. um, some people, you know, at estate sales, they'll just get rid of it. Their kids don't want it or something like that. So yeah. I have gotten a decent amount of stuff at estate sales, but at this point, I'm kind of honing in on the things that I really, really want. Not. And um, I use eBay and Etsy and some mm -hmm. online sources for mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, And, you know, not all of us are maximalists. Mm -hmm. Some of us, my son in, in Denver is much more of a minimalist. Mm -hmm. And he will only allow a certain number of, <laughs> yeah. of things yeah. around. Because I think for some people, it makes them a little nervous. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, especially when they're they're valuable and, and breakables. Yeah. But obviously you and Tommy have got this down to an art form and you could have a job as a as a display. I could see an apartment yeah. uh, department store display stylist or because you've got such a such a knack. Now let's come in here. This is so fun, I can't stand it. Yeah, and that's just a vintage wire display tree, again, found on eBay, and I just fill it, I fill every slot. Um, when I put it up, everything, the, the wire is very flexible, you just bend everything straight up, and then this is this one tall, straight piece of wire, essentially. And then every year you bend it down and you put your ornaments on it. And I really like the expression on that Santa. That's a sweet little Santa. I had I, I actually went out looking. I'm I'm not a very good shopper, mm -hmm. and I went out looking for some just little baubles like mm -hmm. that. They were in. I thought I was getting an early start. It was the first week in December. Everything was gone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Everything was gone. A lot of people are starting to put out their vintage Christmas stuff, uh, like antique stores and yeah. and thrift stores and things like that, around October. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't even find the brand new ones. They yeah. were they were kind all of, out. Yeah, they were out too, and I just have to. What a wonderful kitchen! What a wonderful bright update of an old kitchen. Do you know what the original footprint was? Um, I do know that the original footprint for the house. Um, there was a walkthrough somewhere over mm -hmm. here. Um, the people that redid the house, um, well, they didn't tell us that, but the, the previous owners mentioned that this pantry used to not be here. And somewhere over here, there used to be a total walk around and yeah. a walk through. So at some point, someone's closed off the kitchen. Um, and I, it had to be for storage because there's no, otherwise there would be no storage. This is our pantry right here. Um, well, that's and, definitely something that when you consider buying an older home yeah. that you have to re really downsize your stuff. Yes. Or yes. you have to figure out a way to accommodate it mm -hmm. um, or, or a, you know, change the house yeah. to fit your needs, yeah. to fit your living needs. And something that we really liked about the house was that the footprint was fairly original and we like that. I think, I mean, I like open concepts and everything and we've lived in two other houses that were open concept, but we really like the kind of boxed off sections mm -hmm. of this house. We didn't know how we would like it at first and, and we really love it. So yeah, Tommy in particular has said that he, the longer he lives here, the more he loves it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, what I also like about it is you've managed to change some of your spaces or maybe the previous owners did to get more light yeah. into here yeah. and also to make its livability because all in these older houses, the passageways were mm -hmm. all so small mm -hmm. and so narrow yep. and you've been able to open up the house and in no way change or I think defy the integrity and the style mm -hmm. and the historical, really 
aura of the home. Of the home. Stuart, if you don't mind, let's end on this beautiful view of their backyard. I'm so jealous that you don't have a big transformer pole in your backyard. <laughs> we, like that, is, that is, you know, I always say when, when looking at these older homes, Tommy and I would talk when, when we were trying to decide, you know, where we were going to buy and, and all that. And, you know, you may get a one-car garage, you may get a two-car garage. Mm -hmm. You may get a basement, you may not get a basement. The thing that we got lucky on was we didn't get the power pole you in the backyard. You didn't get the power pole. Yeah. What's interesting is I, I have two friends who recently have, have bought older homes and they didn't realize how prominent the power pole mm -hmm. was until after the ice storm. And now it's like, hello, yeah. mm -hmm. and they've got this unsightly power pole. Yep. But now mm -hmm. I just... I can remember my dad when he visited he said I can't believe all of your your lines aren't buried mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and I said well dad it was just like growing up in your house yep. you know in the 40s and 50s yeah. it would be exorbitantly expensive yeah. to really bury all of these power yeah. lines I would love to have ours buried um, the actually the previous owners buried the line to the garage so we're thankful for that but I would love to have the main line buried, but it would. You could practically buy another yeah. house mm -hmm. for what it costs mm -hmm. to have your to have your exposed yeah. lines buried. Well, thank you so much. I yeah, appreciate it. You would you give my love to Tommy? Yes, I will. And a little bit later, sometime next week, I'm going to start my candy making. Okay. So, so I'll bring I'll bring some down. For Perfect. You. Thank you, my dear. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. that are fans of my friend John Terman and his beautiful blue and white Spanish bungalow right near the Capitol in Oklahoma City, then this is for you because you have so kindly invited us into your home to show us your holiday de decorations. I'm so glad you guys could come by today. Oh, it's just, it's it's so fun. And you and I were talking, I, I would say if there's, because I did a little preview first, if there's an overarching thematic to kind of your holiday decorations, to me, it's wreaths. Yes. Lots of lovely things from your grandmother and vintage and mercury glass. Yeah, lots of shiny things. Lots of shiny yeah. things. Right. So, and obviously, if we're going to start anywhere, we have to start out with of a course. tree. So this sure. is just this is just wonderful. Now, you are a, a proponent of, of artificial trees because you guys have allergy issues, and as a designer, you know the value of something that is enduring. Yes. And, and it is one of those things you can start early with it and it can stay up till epiphany and you don't have to worry about the drying and the watering and all that stuff. And, yeah. and it's an investment, even a live tree is. So at least this carries from one year to the next. So. And live trees, for a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people commented that they're so expensive this they are. year. They and, really are. Yeah, and they're not enduring. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're going out of town, then that could be exactly. an issue also from a fire hazard so, perspective. Well, but, oh my gosh, John, so, this is just lovely. Well, that's 60 years of collecting, so... Um, before I could collect, people collected for me. We were given ornaments every year as kids, you know, to um, just one of those things that eventually when we were, became adults, we would have at least a start of a Christmas tree collection. And that's exactly what happened. So, um, and my grandmother bought some pretty cool things. Uh, I'm trying to see. Well, now when some, you say you refer to your grandmother, is this your maternal grandmother, your paternal grandmother? Paternal grand grandmother. So paternal her grandmother. name was Eunice okay. Terman. Look so she's one. a Terman. Um, and you know, there are things, I think she may have made the one you had your hand on. Um, there were some great, I grew up in Eastern Oklahoma and there were some great stores in Tulsa that had really beautiful decorations and she would often buy something there for us. Um, and then there are things like, like this little mouse over here. That's one of the first ones I remember ever having. So I am pretty yeah. sure it's close to 60 years old. Um, and of course he always gets pride of place. This ginger man's one of those. Um, and you don't see things made like, especially the ginger man anymore. Okay, now, uh, can we just focus And then those on are these? from Tulsa, from Miss Jackson's, you know. Oh, Miss cool yeah. Jackson's. Yeah. Hey, the, if, if in the comments, if you guys are from the Tulsa area or whatever, and you remember Miss Jackson's, by all means, let us know. Absolutely. These are really special, I think. And very, then, very special. And then, you know, in the, in the 90s, I started collecting some Radco things and some Old World Christmas and 
um, these, there's a collection of these animals that are from Virginia, from a craft fair that we collected over several years. Lots of, uh, you've got obviously lots of blue and shades of blue to complement your existing exactly. decorations. Exactly. And it really, it fits in just seamlessly. Thank you. It so, really, and, really and I, does. I've never picked a theme for a tree because I like to be able to buy pretty mm -hmm. much anything I want and yeah. it will work. And I don't feel like it, um, I mean, it's just a nice traditional tree. It's not something that goes out of style. Um, you know, some years it has more ornaments than others, but. Um, now talk a little bit, if you would, because you talked about how you finally were able to find LED lights, yes. the twinkle lights and the C7s in warm tones. The, the, so finally, I'd been looking for a couple of years to buy a new tree, but I wanted a pre-lit with LED. And for so long, the LED was that bright blue, uh -huh. white color. It just doesn't look uh -huh. good in the house. It's not warm. So this year, I finally found one that I really liked um, and got this. And then it came with the white lights, and then I added the C7s. Uh, or C9s, I think they are actually. Are C9s? These are smaller. These are okay. C9s. These yeah. are even smaller. Are, are so C7s ones. are a little bit bigger? They're the bigger okay. one. Anyway, but, um, and with the LED. So um, it's nice now. I don't have to worry about, I mean, I actually put it on a timer finally so it can come on and go off. And I used to kind of worry about all the heat uh -huh. from, especially the C9 lights. They got hot. Uh, so so this, is, this is kind of a quirky question, but this, these are the C9s. Are the C7s the ones that what we think of as the traditional Christmas bulb of the 50s? Was I, that the I shape? Guess. It's just, yeah. Well, no, it's still the shape. It's just bigger. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, well, it's just, it is absolutely, it's, it's beautiful. And then I want to point out very gingerly, Stuart, if you can, because it leads to my question of the day. Uh -huh. I'm going to guess I know which camp you fall into, John. But here's my question of the day. When you decorate your home, do you remove what is there year round and then add your holiday uh, decorations in their place? Or do you embellish what's already there with Christmas baubles and Christmas decor? So what do you do? Well, I try to do the latter. I try to um, just embellish what I have. Um, in some cases, like where Stuart is right now, that um, it's a cheese dome, I guess. Anyway, normally it's filled with seashells. So I did take out the seashells and put in the mercury glass, but I don't have a place to store the big piece. So it works well just to leave it there and do something with it. I really just like to layer in Christmas. It well, makes it easy yeah. to do when you're putting it in. Uh -huh. It makes it really easy when you're putting it away. Right. Which uh, I increasingly yes. is, is a concern, I think, to all of us. But in, So for my question of the day, let me know if you incorporate Christmas decor into what's already out or if you actually put what's already out away to make room for festive and a lot of Fist people of do decor. that. They have really mm -hmm. large collections of Santas or whatever, and they'll yes. empty all the bookshelves. Well, can yes. you imagine if I tried to empty my bookshelves? Yes. So, and, um, and if you do, this is a tip I learned from my friend Elaine. When she would I, like redo her mantle or, I don't know, a dish rack or something uh, like that, she would take a picture of the way it was before she removed everything and put in her holiday decor. So when she had to go back and recreate that vignette, she would remember how she had it arranged right. and, and, and how I do that too, especially it. with my clients when I, I have a couple that I help decorate for Christmas and you know I don't exactly remember where everything was so I do that I may not always put it back exactly like it was uh -huh. but at least it kind of reminds me and yes you know we, it gives you a nice uh, visual clue well and especially uh, if something is form fit yes to it to a display so. and then Stuart if you don't mind showing there's wreaths in every window and I love that. We just saw some of these wreaths at Mockingbird Manor and this is exactly what I had in mind mm -hmm. on how to use them. How, ma how many windows do you have and how many wreaths do you have? There are probably, I think I have about 20 wreaths. There are like three windows that I don't put them in that they don't fit, um, but they're really simple and, and it's just a, a band of ribbon link, you know, uh -huh. linked through the wreath. And we are fortunate that our windows are double hung, so I can literally just lower the top window and put the piece in and close it up uh, in most places. There are a couple of windows we open throughout the year, so I put a thumbtack in those, you know, just to hold it, but very simple. Very, um, very simple. I, for my outdoor ones, I put grommets at the top yeah, to just yeah. slip over And then when I store now. these, I actually take, I took uh, the tube out of paper towels and cut it, and so I just roll that ribbon around that. So it keeps the ribbon smooth. Yeah. Um, so it's really great easy. You're, idea. Not, you're, not, you're not redoing ribbon every year, which is a nightmare. And, yeah, and dust free. Um, yeah. But I, I love the uniformity of that. Yeah, that is a theme throughout the whole house. So you'll see wreaths in all the windows and all the rooms. And then you have, I noticed just, just little trinkets. You have angels and things that some of which probably are out year round, but some obviously. Of them are, and some of them are, yeah. 
Um, now, because, you know, obviously this is all about garden inspired <laughs> living. This is about garden inspired living. Look at this gorgeous bird's nest fern. Oh my word, look at all that new growth. This just makes me salivate uh, with envy. Good. It's yeah. so, so beautiful. You said this is really old? I've had it for old? seven or eight years and it was fairly small when I got it. Actually, it was in an arrangement where somebody had done several live plants together, you know, in a basket. Uh -huh. And that's the one I kept out of it. So I've, I've kept it along. And it stays inside most years. It stays in all year. Occasionally I'll put it out on the porch. And this is south sun. It doesn't get too much sun for you here? Not in the winter. Even though it is south, I think it's, we keep our house cool for one thing too. Right. So they like that. Um, it's, we don't have a real warm home, so I think that's part of it. But generally it's a little bit where the Christmas tree is, so it's a little more uh, uh, protected from yeah, the Yeah, well, it's, it's really, really uh, just, just beautiful. Yeah, I love a, a gardening touch in your house all the time. If something live, I think that's yeah, so important. Um, I, I agree. So. And well, and you've got also live poinsettias around. Yes. You've got lots of, you said these were very, would, would See, you say another, these were 60s or 70s from your 70s. grandmother? That was, my grandmother bought it, but it was in the 70s, and that's a Christmas tree topper. Um, and you'll see another one in the dining room that's actually on a Christmas tree. Um, but they make great little, you know, just decorative yeah. accessory things. Again, well, I, I'm pretty sure that's from Miss Jackson's as well. Well, and what I love about them is they speak to different eras, or at least those eras where we grew up yes. and experienced our child. Absolutely. Our, our so, children's Well, that was on the top Christmas. of our family tree for yeah. many years. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and look at these. These are very, very dear. Yeah, I you, found those at Mockingbird Manor many years ago. So. Don't you love Mockingbird Manor? Yeah, it's one of my favorite places to go. Just, Just to even wonder, be inspired. So yes, uh, shop for ideas, and yes. then you always you always end up coming home with something. Oh, you do absolutely. Yeah, we just so. recently did a little tour there. Oh, did you? Okay. Of Mockingbird that. Manor, and they had just so fun things. You said you thought these were Italian. I think they're Italian. Uh, just paper, pressed paper. I think there's a label on. Yeah, made in Italy. Yeah, and so. the fact that they can be so probably, and they, this is what's cool. Talk about storing things. Them out. They go like don't, that. Don't you love the so, brilliance of that? I know, and I'm sure these were designed for tourists because uh -huh. you know that would be so easy to slip in your suitcase when you're in Venice. Well, you know what? Um, if I were in Venice and I were a tourist, I would, I would, I would look for these. When I, I, go I to know. Venice. I would slip so, several of those, several yeah. of those in my suitcase, so. and and then this is one of you've done one of my very favorite things to do, which is working with your existing decor, just taking whatever wreaths you can find, whether you make them yeah. or sometimes these are Christmas ornaments. You said you thought this was a napkin I ring, think it is, yeah. and you just slip it over. I love the expression. <laughs> I love the expression on this face, like whatever. What happened to me? Yeah, right, just so. put that wreath on me, whatever. But, and this is a great example of where I didn't touch anything else on this chest. I just added that wreath to it, and you immediately saw it, which yes. you know it's a little touch of Christmas. Little so detail. I think that those are important throughout the whole house. And it speaks to your your signature touches, your Christmas signature yes. touches of of wreaths. Okay, now let's go to the next area. Okay. Well, as I have done many times, this is where I come in, your front door, which is so, so charming, and behind you to greet me. This is a really realistic faux wreath. Isn't that great? And that was kind of hard to find. I'd found the small ones in all the other windows, but I couldn't find the right one for the front door. And finally, this year on Terrain, which is a, a oh, company, Shop Terrain, shop terrain Love they terrain. had this and I tried it. And I really, again, and you can't see this on the outside, but there's one wreath outside on the chimney, which a lot of the viewers who saw this before will remember I had a very plain chimney. So you see a wreath outside, that's the start. And then you see one here. And then yes. you come in and you start seeing yes. one all the windows. But finding this one was tough. So it was a, I, they were always too big mm -hmm. or too thick. And to get a, one that fits on here and then to go behind the storm door was tricky. So well, I think um, a, a wreath that permanently is your focal yeah. point for when you come in, it's worth investing a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more in that. So here's a here's a question for you. I, I, for me, you know, there are traditional, just iconic forms of Christmas. There's the wreath mm -hmm. form and the Christmas tree form, and I definitely fall in camp wreath. I do too. I I really do. So there's something about that conical shape that I just don't love as much. Yeah, and the, uh, just the continuity, it's round, the softness and it's soft, of it. Right, uh, and it. You know, wreaths can be used lots of times of the year. They're not just a Christmas item, so mm -hmm. I think that's part of why I like it too. Yeah, oh, I could um, see this beautifully. Oh yeah, you could embellish that in the a little spring bit, with right. spring put a different color ribbon. And all that, yeah. Yes, and yeah. then here's another angel. It is this obviously probably came from your grandmother. It did, and I, I think she probably purchased that in the late fifties or the early sixties. It looks very fifties um, to me. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. She had a, a living room that was blue and purple, and then she at Christmas would use pink in there instead of red. Um, so she had. You must have uh, gotten your flair for uh, for design course, from absolutely. from your yeah, grandmother. It is somewhat innate. 
Um, anyway, but that was one of the pieces that I kept from her collection of things. And, and a whole pink Christmas thing is a bit overmatched, I think, at this point. But in the 50s and 60s, it was, it was, it was, it was kind of the thing. Well, so. what I love about the 50s ornaments is, is for those of us of a certain age, that is nostalgic Christmas mm. to us. It was the, it was the Christmas of the fifties of of that iconic movie, The Christmas Story, and yes. the Red Ryder BB gun. Mm -hmm. To me, that was kind of what really signified the magical it, it, the magical right, so. um, aura of Christmas. And then over here, you've got uh, We Three Kings. All right, that's an estate sale find again. I think from the sixties, so some late mid century Christmas. So. I'm going to have to up my game on estate sales. <laughs> I, 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 go to lots of, I do lots of thrifting. I don't do lots I, of estate and, and sales. They're, they're two different things. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, I paid a dollar or two a piece for those. I mean, they were really inexpensive. Um, but they're, they look handcrafted. They and do. They're just they beautiful. Do. In fact, they kind of look Italian to me, too, the way the mm -hmm. paper and the coloring and everything. When I was in high school, I worked in a gift shop. I don't know if you remember Nomi's Ark in Edmond, I and I worked in that gift shop, and we sold things Did like yeah. uh -huh. we sold things like that. Okay, so, let's go upstairs because you've you've got a guest bedroom and another office upstairs. So let's right. go up here. Well, I am a huge fan of needlepoint. At one time, I really did a lot of it, and I need to did take you? it back yeah, up again because it's so relaxing. But that needlepoint pillow is exquisite. Isn't that lovely? A, a good friend of mine made that several years ago. And then those are little, um, I guess, china or pottery ornaments sewn onto it. So, What a clever yeah. idea. A really clever idea. And if you don't needlepoint, sometimes that's something that you can find at the Better Antique mm -hmm. stores and, and thrift stores. And I would ha I would happily snuggle up as a guest in your well, in your holiday home with yeah. that green teddy bear. I think it's kind of important to give a little something to your guests, um, you know, that's holiday. And right. Something in there because a lot of times, especially this room, they can come up and sit in the chair, and, and there's just a little bit of festiveness going on. So. Well, it's yeah. just a nod to the season, yeah. and and plus, I think sometimes it's fun when you don't discover everything all at once, where it reveals itself over time Absolutely. and you appreciate the nuance and the humor of little touches. Yeah. Of... But, and, and like in a guest room, it's just simple even just to do find some red sheets and put those on the bed for Christmas, uh -huh. you know, and, and I, I don't use them any other time of the year. They're just for Christmas. So. It would, uh, it would be incredible to see your house decorated for Hanukkah with all of the blue and the white blue, and the yes, silver and everything. Would it would, However, it might blend in so much. <laughs> well, that's true, too. That yeah, we, one of the nice things, red's a good accent for the house being blue and white and creams, you know, so the red really does show up. And there's always some red in our house, but, um, but of course, a lot more comes out at Christmas. So do, are, these, are these sheets out your, I can't remember. No, I never use them except for Christmas. Okay, except I mean, for Christmas. Just, yeah. No, normally the bed's done in blue and white, so. Well, it just is... Couldn't be charming. And then, of course, you've got your statement wreaths. Yes, my wreaths up everywhere. Here. And I was looking in this office over here, and you have you have some of the same needlepoint pillows. Right. I've got that little Merry Christmas pillow and, and the repetition the wreaths, of the wreaths. Right. And then the bathroom windows don't lend themselves to wreaths so much. So those are some Santas I just stuck in there. They fit perfectly, mm -hmm. just just barely. That one just Santa, barely, that one so. Santa. Yeah, Stuart, that's the that's the pillow that I have, and then I, Stuart's giving me a look like you're mo we're moving ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that those are going to show up. But look well. at the look at the cute little Santas there. That are just. They look like they were just made for they that, kind of that window. They're even the right color green for the bathroom with yeah. the greens on them. Um, well, it's it's something that older homes just have that is just so uniquely the personality of an older home, mm -hmm. and that's the unique tiles and the unique and colors and, and things of that nature. Okay, you want to go down and go to your we, kitchen now, we can go down. dining room so. and kitchen. Well, probably the easiest way to festivize any room is just put some glittery baubles in a bowl. It absolutely is. So, so that, the, that's part of my collection of vintage balls that I, again, purchased at estate sales. Uh -huh. and, and actually some thrift stores on those because for many years you could find those by the box still. 
you know, yes, not with the, and the box is uh, every yeah. bit as precious. And, well, and you know, I used to put them all back in the box. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Finally, one year I was putting all this stuff away, and I was like, okay, enough. <laughs> enough already. So now they go in enough. giant Ziploc bags. <laughs> well, I um, was looking for just some plain baubles the other well, day. I, they were in short supply. I they couldn't are. find and, any. And the old ones, I mean, like I used to pay ten or twenty-five cents a piece for them. You know, they're like three and four and five dollars now yeah. for just the plain ones. Yeah. So yeah. it's really crazy. So I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I bought them when I bought them because right. they, they, I probably wouldn't do it now. Well, you've got little so, Santas and yeah, just, bows. And it, you know, again, one bow makes. I mean, I didn't touch anything on here right. again. Just added that bow to that, and it just it's makes that a little pop of red, yeah, and it, it draws your eye. So. That real pop of um, red, and then over here. You've got this wonderful, and I love this idea. Talk about a, a real hack, and that's using a, a quilt or, or a, a blanket or right. anything as a tablecloth. So this is an old bedspread, and fortunately, it is finished all the way around with fringe. And um, I'm assuming it came that way. I don't know. Uh-huh. And again, this was something my grandmother used every year, um, and we used to eat on it. It's it. We don't anymore because it's it's uh, kind of past its prime. But it makes a great. You know, just an everyday cloth to be on there. Yes, so. and I love just uh, the I yeah. love the red and white, which has kind of been my my color theme yeah. for the for this year. Now this isn't holiday, but I have to comment on these marble. Aren't those fruits. gorgeous? Yeah. Oh my word, these are exquisite. So, and that's one of those things that are always out. Um, but at Christmas, I like to pull some things around so you see them in a different way, and they kind of look like sugared fruit. That the texture yes. on the marble kind of gives you that look, and. I just think they work well with that. And then, and in here especially, I've pulled all my mercury glass out from uh-huh. various spots. And um, there are you know, things on the table, there are things over here. These are usually in the front window in the living room. Um, yeah, for many, many years, I, I made huge displays on a tiered stand of sugared fruit. Oh, yeah with sugar, gilded uh, sugar, it, it, it's, yeah. it's gorgeous, but it's but a lot it, of work, but it's a lot of work and it doesn't last very no, long. Doesn't, so. Okay. So there, and you, I recognize something. Do you see your, your basket? Color there. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I do so. see that basket. So I will say that that was, um, a, I don't normally put poinsettias in here, but this year I decided I want to do something different and I had them and I was like, I need the right thing for these to go in and your baskets were sitting and I was like, I'm going to try this. And I wasn't sure it would work, but it really does. No, um, it, it, I love it. it. So it's, it's very you, John. Well, it kind of yeah, is, isn't it's, it? So, it's very you, John. Um, so and now then, I'm looking for a new home for my Christmas cards. Usually there's a silver tray there with all the Christmas cards, cards in it. Cards on it. And I don't know where that's going to go yet. So Well, fortunately, we don't, have as many, we don't get as many we Christmas don't. cards as we, we used not, to. So. Um, okay, and you've got a wonderful. So, right. And so this is okay. kind of the tree that I've done with all the little ornaments on it, just so you can see them better. They get lost in a big tree. Uh, but another one of those cool um, tree toppers that my grandmother bought, uh, again, Miss Jackson's in Tulsa. How long did it take you to put all of those on there? <sighs> it's a while. And you do it in phases. You do it, and then you uh-huh. kind of walk away from it for a day or two, and then you come back and put some more in. Yeah. And, um, and you know, I'm always tempted just to put a, a sheet over this or something and see if I can make it stay. But I'm, I'm still a little You're chicken still with that. So, well, um, I, the other thing is, is I think when you do it in installments, yeah. <laughs> installment decorating, is then you appreciate more each and every little well, bauble and the absolutely. story of each and yeah. every and one. I, and Christmas is one of those times when you really do think about where things came from. You and, do. And if it meant something to you or not. And so that is, it's kind of therapeutic if you like that sort of thing. To put all this stuff back on individually, yeah. you know, and taking it yeah. off is not quite as much fun. But um, and I think I think increasingly now, I, you kind of give yourself permission. I used to think every single thing had to be done every single year, and now I don't feel that way anymore. It makes it more special when I don't do some of the same things every year. Well, and I will tell you this year, for especially this year, um, I did far more than I had done the last two years. So I had kind of gotten to where I just did the reason the window, which believe it or not is enough. To make you feel like it's Christmas. Yes, yes. Uh, but then this year has been fun, and, and I've had more time at home. And well, it was just and last nice. year was yeah. COVID. I, it was I think crazy. a lot yeah. of us. And we knew maybe. we weren't going to have people in at all last yeah. year. So. Yeah. Um, and another thing I did this year too, as I said, I bought a new tree for the living room, which is larger than the one I had. I used to have three trees, so I was able to consolidate well, down to t- two, two, which that took a lot of time out of, of the whole situation, which was nice. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going through all of my yeah. Christmas decorations and really curating them to see what I want to keep uh, and what I don't. I have I have a two totes of need to go away ornaments, yes. but I can't let go of them yet. So. Well, last, you know, increasingly I just use, I do use most, I have a live small, but uh, I have a live tree and live greenery. And the, the reason I like it is because once it's done, it just goes into the compost pile or it's just discarded yes, and I don't really have to pack it and put it away. I think all of us try 
whether we're older or younger or whatever, we're trying to, in our own way, simplify Christmas mm -hmm. and its execution because it is, it's a lot of work to, to make magic. It is, it is, it really yeah. is. So, it's, and, and even though, I mean, I, I have simplified this over the years because I used to do a lot of greenery and a lot of berries mm -hmm. and garlands and a lot, you know, a lot more lights and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And it, that just takes so much time. So, right. and you know, I used to like decorate the chandelier and I would yeah. do the staircase. Oh, yeah. and, uh -huh. and then I'd be sitting there a week later thinking, this is just too much. It yeah. just, it is. Yeah, so, I think picking and, uh, picking and choosing right. and is, I think, something that we all constantly kind of struggle. Yes, what's just the right, what's just the right tone? But if I had a, if set. I had, you know, if, if I didn't have any time at all, I would have just put the wreaths up this year. And it would and, have been. And that would have been plenty, yeah. I think. I think it would have and still And especially if we get as much yeah. snow as we got last yeah. year, just please not that hard freeze in the February. The angels that um, Stuart's looking at now are from a local artist here in Oklahoma City who made those several years ago. Susan King, did Susan, you say? Suzanne King. Suzanne and King. And she started, she used to do them um, with children. And they would all make a funny, happy face on them. Uh -huh. Well, I like the angels, but I did not like the funny faces. Wait, so, they kind of scary so these were commissioned without faces. So they How just funny. have a plain face, so that they you know, are a little more serious Christmas ornament. But I'm sure there are lots of kids in Oklahoma City who have these who, who help make them and, uh -huh. and decorate uh -huh. them and all that. Uh -huh. so, and that could be special. Uh, yeah. Your kitchen always has so much color in it, just naturally. John, well, and, I don't know how much stuff you even have to really do in yeah, here. And that, it I add that, of festive. course. I get another little... Thing, or a little bobble, um, did the wreaths. And of course, our kitchen table is always Christmas because it's red. Uh -huh. So um, didn't have to do anything there. But you've got another beautiful Good. poinsettia. I, I am, poinsettia is one of those Christmas holiday plants that I run hot and cold on. Do you? I just, I think, you know, you can see so many really sad ones. Well, that's what I was going to say. You have to buy good ones. You have to you buy good ones. You can't go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy <laughs> the $2 ones because they just, they don't last and they don't look good. They're not pretty. Yeah, and um, I, I, but yours just, they almost don't look real because well, they're just right. so and gorgeous. I will say when you buy them from a, a good nursery, you know, the color is usually really intense. Mm -hmm. And they last. I mean, I, I feel bad in the end of January when I just finally throw them away. Yeah. Because I'm, I am sick of them by then. But it's such instant color. It is. And um, we keep our house fairly cool anyway, so they, it's a pretty good environment for them. I think if in a really warm house, they don't do real well either. So yeah. uh, you're right. There are lots of sad ones in the world. But, and um, then speaking of holiday plants, now yours doesn't necessarily look like it's specific to the holidays, but you've got a rosemary over here. And that's something I always encourage people to quite often ask, where do I get my topiaries? Mm -hmm. Where do I get, um, whether it's cy lemon cypress or it's a rosemary topiary, or in some cases even boxwood. Well, Christmas time, the holidays, really an opportune time to search them out it because is. a lot of times they will be available as a holiday plant and if you can keep them alive right. so. if you can keep them alive for me then they just make a beautiful topiary no, contribution really and of course mine's not in garden. any sort of form and, and that was just from outside you know that i used out for the summer but i always bring it in and mm -hmm. it generally makes it to get back outside yeah. just doesn't look too good on. but generally does and well, then of course those are the little topiary starts that you brought me um, next to it. So oh, I do those recognize yeah. those. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I did little... put them in clay pots. So. You, yes. No, as, as I suspected <laughs> right. you would. As um, I suspected you would. So anyway, but and again, I think things from outside in the winter um, add to the holiday spirit. Oh, I, I mean, it's, it I doesn't have too. to be just all Christmas stuff. And of course, in January, I love these just as much uh -huh. as well when all the red's gone. So, yeah, and it, li um, it livens up the inside really does, of your so. house. This year, well, I don't know about your little microcosm here, but in my yard, I still have not had a freeze. No. And so I, lots of my topiaries and things, they're still outside, which I'm, while I'm nervous about the fact that it's so warm, it is nice that I don't have to bring them in so their indoor sabbatical will not be so long well, that they'll I suffer. I waited until like the week before Thanksgiving and I finally brought the succulents in that I wanted to keep. And, um, the rosemary came yeah. in, I think too. There's still, I mean, I think I'm going to keep my uh, plumbago. I dug it out of the pot and put it in a yeah, plastic Yeah, you told bag. me you were going to try to do that. And it's sitting out there. And I wondered last night whether I may have gone one day too long. We'll see. Well, um, there's, you know, the thing is, even if it freezes, there's so much, if plants aren't elevated, there's so much residual heat yes, on surfaces, so. whether but, it's... And a, the other cool thing, the geraniums over here in our east Oh, I know. They've never been... <laughs> They are stunning. In fact, I think you can see from the window out here, Stuart, when you go by. And I always want to bring it in because they're such you know beautiful red color for Christmas. Yeah, it, um, but I won't. So yeah, I don't know. It? Stuart, can yeah, you get that? a little glimpse of them? I know. And even it's it? December. I know. We should not have these at all. So um, 
It's, it's. You can definitely see them. Yep. <laughs> that, speaking of pop of color. No, it really is. And then in the master bedroom. So again, my same tricks, change fit, the sheets. Fit, fit for a king. All right, we ornaments have the, in a bowl. Yeah. Yeah, Stuart, can you see this very regal bowl <laughs> of, of handmade ornaments mm -hmm. that you say may be... I think they were probably kits. Kits, kits. okay. Um, and again, grandmother, who did so many things, did these in the 60s. And um, and there, some of them were kind of in 60s colors, especially the, the teal one and the pink one. Okay, so pick uh, your favorite, John. Well, I sort of am partial to this green one. This with green all of one? This stuff hanging off of it. So. And you know, you could, you could really, if you were creative, you could really... And you know, something like that would be gorgeous used at Easter on the table. Uh -huh. or, it's very uh, Marie, Marie Antoinette. It is, right. It really is. <laughs> yeah. So. Stuart, which is your favorite? This one? The dark this green one, one, yeah. It's more manly. It's more manly. I kind of, I, I, I don't know. Well, I'm the color just, on that one's so intense. Oh, and I didn't see this green one over here. Oh my gosh. Well, the the textural contrast of the velvet and the you know the yeah. sparkly well, ribbon and the sequins is and I very really think, fun. You know, someone who's who's far craftier than I could take custom jewelry and ribbon and things oh, yeah. and make some really cool heirloom type <laughs> ornaments. Oh, wouldn't this be uh, a wouldn't this be a fun way to trick somebody for an engagement ring or yes, something right. is to have it on here and say, oh, look, that's especially yep, really sparkly. Would. So, anyway, I think they're pretty creative. <laughs> Stuart's oh, laughing. Just gave you an idea. Yeah, yeah Stuart's does. laughing at me, yeah. but wouldn't that be, yeah, wouldn't that be a idea. fun idea? And I wonder how common they were because I don't, I've seen a few over the years, but never a lot. So, I've never seen any quite this ornate. Yeah, so I and, and I also don't, I don't remember seeing them with a the velvet. Hmm. the velvet underneath. But then you've got your traditional wreaths in these windows. You've got more... More mercury glass. Yeah, more mercury glass baubles. And it's just... And and then earlier you were talking about, yes, you do. I, I, don't you just love the primitive yes, vibe? Yes, I do. That's a... Of these vintage Ralph Lauren blanket that, these that I pull out at Christmas and stripes together. And Stuart, you were saying you had this. Where did you have I this had as a wallpaper? In my old bathroom. <laughs> did you just flash back to your old bathroom and growing yeah. growing up? <laughs> well, it reminded me of my grandfather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Memory, actually. Yes. Yes. Very, very fun. I see an, another Italian Christmas tree. Yes. So I, do, I think it's important Down to here. put things in rooms where you are often in them, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a nice little thing in the morning when you're getting dressed to have a little Christmas cheer. So, yeah, yeah, uh, to kind of get your day started. Nothing major, just started a little right. something. So. And then I have to end up here because these are just wonderful. First of all, I, I adore campaign furniture. Isn't that great? And this is an especially beautiful mm -hmm. version of one. And then your trademark blue glazed blue pots with those fabulous succulents in them. Really, really and, beautiful. And that table was another estate sale find, and I didn't really have a place for it. So it's really been in the storage. And just this fall, I figured out I can use this for my winter plants. Um, yeah, and it's, so I brought it in. So I'm glad that, I got it. Let's see. Does that face north? It is north. Uh -huh. Will they get enough light there? Do you think? Well, I hope so. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll so. see. But um, typically, I have kept those in the storage place next to the garage, which gets very low light and gets fairly cold. Now last year, things did not survive that because it got too cold right. for too long. Right. Uh, but these were so beautiful this year, I just really wanted to bring oh, them in the house and try. They're, they're just uh, a, so we'll see. a beautiful, a beautiful yeah. appointment. Well, we'll end on that on that last sweet little wreath hanging above the succulents. I can't thank you enough, my friend. Oh, it's so good to see you. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming. Merry Christmas. And you too, Stuart. Merry Christmas to you. Well, come on in, Stuart. I'm gonna pretend for a moment that Stuart is my son, Johnny, who is going to be here in a matter of, of minutes now. He gets here in about an hour. For those of you that I, I 
think I told you that my end date to have everything ready was December 17th because that's when he got in the States. He actually landed in LA. He spent last night in LA and he will get here this afternoon. It's our tradition that Hubs goes and picks him up at the airport and then I am home um, just kind of being a fairy <laughs> waiting for him to arrive. Um, my younger son Jamie, I'm sorry he can't be here. He just uh, FaceTimed me. He is at Copper Mountain Skiing. You can hear that lots is going on. There was my dryer. It just went off and beeped its last load. And that's my question of the day. No matter how much scurrying and bustling about and zhuzhing you do, it always seems like there are just a few more things you have to get done before that, that important person arrives, whether it's Santa or it's a loved one. So if that's true for you, let me know. I find this kind of stuff, I don't know, kind of just fascinating. So welcome to our morning room slash library slash bar. And I've kind of got it decked out for the holidays. So I've got a live wreath hanging in my etched glass window. It is a fresh wreath with some berries from my garden. There are some pine cones and branches and things that I save from one year to the next to festoon. Uh, what is typically a pretty important focal point in this room. I normally have a wreath in that window. I went crazy this year, you guys, and it was such an unexpected joy. Normally, I like the look of my silver being kind of aged and tarnished, and this year I just went crazy polishing everything. Stuart was kind of making fun of me. Um, but it just lends so much light and sparkle and I think kind of unexpected magic to everything. So I polished um, my ice bucket, which I will fill here shortly. I polished the trays. Um, Stuart just, it, it's kind of funny, moments ago he said, there's just little goodies everywhere. So I've got out nuts and gingerbread. These are these thumbprint glasses. I'm sure for many of you, you recognize them. If you do, let me know. I have a picture that matches. These belong to my mom. And these embroidered Christmas doilies or Christmas napkins. I got these in Langawi years ago when we were doing a cruise in Malaysia and Thailand, up and down that coast, and I love them. Which one is your favorite? I kind of always navigate to the wreath. So, I get these out for festive occasions like this Christmas. Um, I've got lots of amaryllis in bloom everywhere. I ordered lots from Brex that are still coming into bloom and they're planted up, but I wanted to have some already in blossom for when Johnny got here. And most of those that bloom early are red lion. As you guys know, amaryllis, they just have a mind of their own. They just bloom when they want to bloom. And if they bloom by Christmas, that's fine. And if they don't, I'll enjoy them after the holidays. So I've, I've got the bar bedecked with their favorite beverages, things that they like to drink, um, because we will have lots of my son's friends visiting. I might have a little impromptu open house tomorrow. One thing that I always get early in the season are these Amarina cherries with stems because my son likes drinking old fashions and you can get these at Trader Joe's but they sell out pretty quickly. So typically I stock up as soon as I see them and I give them also, this is another stocking stuffer that I sometimes give for the holidays. So that's kind of what's, what's going on here. And then on my little sidebar, I've got 
I was saying earlier, Stuart says, you've got goodies tucked everywhere. Well, I've got trail mix in here. I've got more in, in the kitchen. This was a gift from my new daughter-in-law's mom. Um, do I have goodies in here? No goodies in there yet, Stuart. We'll have to decide what to fill that with. I've got some Spode coasters out and then all of the setups that my kids like to use in their drinks and things like that. And then a little bit later, after five, I will make sure that there's ice, sliced limes, sliced lemons, oranges, whatever they, whatever their little heart desires. Um, I got my Santa cap out with greenery tucked in a number of different places. Now come into the living room. And one of the things I love about doing these house tours, you guys, of different homes uh, at the holidays, is there's just, it's like gardens. There's no one standard form of beauty. There's multiple forms of beauty, depending on what your taste is, what colors you like, um, what vintage of objects you desire. And I think that's one of the fun things about visiting different homes. I, I, and I'm guessing you guys do too. So I hope you enjoyed some of the holiday house tours that we had this year. Um, I got this old fashioned, Christmas banner at a date with Iris, my favorite flower shop just up the street. There's a needlepoint Santa from my, my, one of my dearest friends, Deborah. She needlepointed that for me many years ago. It's a little, a little gardening Santa. It's one of my precious uh, Christmas possessions. And then over here, I'll try not to move so fast, Stuart, that you make people dizzy. I've got more amaryllis getting ready to come into bloom. Little tiny trees. And just as I was discussing at John Terman's home, he talked about just festooning things that you already have in place. Um, your regular decor and you just try to make it a little bit more festive. So my little terrier dog that reminds me of a little tiny dog we had years ago named Billie Holiday, named after my favorite singer. And I just put a little wreath on Billie Holiday and put out some of the my boy's favorite Christmas books if they want to wax nostalgic while they're here. Um, I can't remember, Stuart, do you remember if I showed this little trio of Christmas trees planted up when I was just beginning to decorate? These are tiny little evergreen trees that I got. I think I got these at Trader Joe's, but I've seen them a million different places. And I just potted them up in one of these rectangular window box style terracotta pots. And then I mulched it with moss and some different bark with lichen on it. Now, one thing I think you'll notice as we look at different ornaments is or and different things is that I like my vignettes, my Christmas vignettes, to tell a little bit of a story. So you'll notice that I've got some of these reindeer ornaments around, and I love the way they gaze up. I, I found these a couple of years ago. They seldom hang on the tree because they're just too dear to put in place and tell a little story about them gazing at, um, at some Christmas trees. I've got a waxed Brex bulb in here, amaryllis bulb in here, no water or soil or gravel required. And it's a little bit more elegant, so I have it to look forward to. And then I added Oh, a, a few more ornaments to the tree. I think it's still kind of simple, um, but one of my favorite things this year, and I got these off of Amazon, you guys, were these glass icicles. And they come in different lengths, but I just love the way they look. And I think they are, they just create kind of a magical quality. And most of the ornaments I have in, on here are old mercury glass ornaments that I've had for years. I did get one new ornament this year and it's, it's a little llama. 
and I got that because it reminds me of one time when I was out working in the garden and and a man with a llama and a carriage came by and took my kids for a llama ride and it reminded me of that happy memory. So just a few a few ornaments that I added to the tree and then normally I I kind of try to coordinate all of my gift wrap and most of it matches. This year I was really in what I think of as a spend out mode and I wanted to just use up whatever Christmas decorations, Christmas ornaments, whatever I had, ribbons that I had in my basement to wrap things in. All of these will be removed to where we will spend Christmas. Some things I just like to have on the outside of the package to maybe give a little hint as to what's inside. This is an apron for my son and a book on charcuterie. I think he will like that. Oh, I'm glad you said that, Stuart. I would have forgotten. So I was running out of ribbon and I had a bunch of these fairy lights and I thought, oh, how cute would that be, especially at night to wrap some of your gifts with these fairy lights instead of using ribbon. And it can, be, it can become part of the gift itself. Um, I happen to know that these little reindeer, these little furry reindeer are some of Stuart's mom's favorites. She comments on them whenever she comes. And like I say, I just love the way they look up at things. And what this reindeer is looking at is one of my favorite things this holiday. And it's some of those battery operated taper candles. I got those off of Amazon and they take two AAA batteries. I absolutely, I know it looks so real. And you can put them on a candle setting, Stuart, or you can put them on a light setting. So that's, that's kind of fun. And of course I have to have topiary somewhere in my holiday decor. So these are just ivies with some mercury glass clusters of grapes. And then Stuart, this is, uh, did you, I gave you yours to give to your mom, didn't I? Okay, cause Stuart got it. She hasn't gotten yet. Okay, so we, we all went crazy on these atrio tile earrings this year because they, they're just a crowd favorite. And Stuart got some for him, from his mom. Now, my stockings, I, I tuck a few little gifts into what I call just my decorative stockings. The kids' real stockings have all of the other stocking stuffers in them that they will actually open on Christmas Day. And I did a video on stocking stuffers and a lot of the things that I'm giving this year. So you might, Stuart, let's put a, a link above that if people haven't watched it. So this year, I, I just always like to tuck fun little things in here. I think I mentioned earlier that I was captivated by these little felt ornaments. I had some and I got a couple more at Mockingbird Manor when I was there. This little doggy, I think is pretty cute. Actually, that's a little reindeer. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then I tuck in some of their favorite candies. These are those, um, the. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Stuart was just enthralled by these. These are Oreo flavored candy canes. Stuart, I have a feeling you're gonna take some of these home with you, aren't you? But isn't that fun? Yeah. And then these little boxes, every year I wrap them and these are my boys' lifesaver books, which you and I have talked about before, Stuart. They are just a disappointment now compared <laughs> to what they were when we were children. But nevertheless, a tradition is a tradition. And this wreath is one I showed you before I hung it. It was part of the Together Weather campaign that I did with Terrain earlier in the year. And I love it because it's kind of an all season, uh, an all season wreath that I can hang in a number of different places. Oh yeah, those, I added those. Thank you, Stuart. These are some glass and then frosted and glittered ornaments that look like pine cones and these show up in all sorts of different vignettes from from year to year and then when i wanted some dried dried appointments i think i told you earlier that this year those dried appointments were rose hips 
that I saved from last year. They're dried rose hips that came in a flower arrangement. I had a whole bunch of those this year. Oops. And I just kind of tuck them in wherever I think they'll look sweet. And then also I love to use dried seeded eucalyptus. And when I use it in arrangements, I will often save some of it. Sometimes I'll spray paint it. Sometimes I'll just leave it au naturel, but I love the way it looks. And then I tucked in some little flocked, little flocked pine cones. Okay, this, um, I told Stuart that he could, he could take anything that there were multiples of before we shot this video, but he couldn't attack the dessert plate until after we shot the video because I think that this little dessert plate tells a story too. Don't you love that the Nutcracker came on just as I was saying that? <laughs> this is very much something that reminds me of my mom because we would have this a spode tiered candy platter every year. She would have it filled with goodies. Um, as I've told you a hundred times before, I came from a very large family. There were 10 kids. At Christmas time, it was always chaotic. There were a million people coming in and out, and this, this little sweet tray would be replenished multiple times during the day, during the holiday season. But look at some of, even, like I say, even this little tray tells a story because I got some of these little chocolates which I think are so dear. And I got those at Trader Joe's. Again, early in the season, you guys, you have to take advantage and get their seasonal items when you see them because they will be gone next time you go back. Um, I love these little bottle brush trees. Now mine are, are not vintage like those we saw at John's and those we saw at my friend Sydney's, but I think they're sweet nevertheless. And one of my favorite things to do is to tuck them into a taper candle holder and I'll show you how I secured it momentarily, but then it makes a really sweet Christmas tree skirt for your little bottle brush trees. Now I could have a whole forest here if I so if I so chose. Here's another question I have for you guys. If first of all, do you have that classic Christmas spode china? So let me know if you do. And if you do, do you use the plates, the bowls, everything? all during the season? In other words, for your everyday meals, do you save it just for special occasions? I, this is my favorite OG plate. I love the shape of this and I keep this out all during the season and pretty soon it will probably hold some other baked goodies. I think I have some peanut, chocolate peanut clusters in our future, Stuart. So that may go in there. Um, so that's my, my little, tableau, um, my little chocolate tableau. Now, if we come over here, I think I showed you last time that I had these wooden angels that I had gifted to my mom years ago. And I, they were re-gifted to me after she passed. So I was gonna just, I, I couldn't decide really where to put them. And then I loved the little story that they could tell sitting here behind the couch. I made them some little halos and evergreen wreaths. I tucked some fairy lights in this apple in this apple and pear bowl. One of the things I love about the holidays is beautiful fruits that aren't always available other times of year. And this time of year, you can sometimes find tiny apples and tiny little seckle pears, lady apples sometimes, and I love those diminutive little fruits. I think they're especially sweet. And so my story here, my husband said, said oh, look at the little angel that she just picked. He's always interpreting my little stories um, that she just picked an apple from the tree. And I said, yes, and she's feeding it to the little bird. So I, I don't know, it's kind of silly, but it brings out the child in me. And I have fun doing it and composing it. And I get even more joy when somebody actually gets it. And when my husband got that this morning, it, it really made me happy. Okay, now come into my, my newly painted green dining room where 
probably, I'm hoping, if my son is not too jet lagged, I'll have a little bit of an open house tomorrow and it will be in here. Now come this way, Stuart, if you would, because this room isn't, isn't completely decorated yet because it's still a work in progress because I've got more entertaining to do. But I think I've showed you my greenhouse window that has more amaryllis in it. It's got lots of my myrtle topiaries. It's got some of my volunteer laurel topiaries that I just dug up from my yard. There's a little lemon cypress topiary in there. And then I've got my massive arrangement on the dining table that is all greens and lilies and berries. And I might have to refresh that one more time before the holidays, but maybe just the greenery and nothing else. Even when the greenery starts to dry, I kind of like the way it looks um, because it looks like a, a garden in winter. So sometimes I'll leave it. It just depends on what mood I'm in. Um, if you see beyond at the sideboard, I polished all of my silver there, my silver candlesticks. And this is one thing that I, I do at Christmas time as a special holiday touch. I buy extra tall candles. You guys know how much I love burning my candles uh, for entertaining, but also in the morning when I meditate. And for the holidays, I get extra tall candles. And they were a little bit difficult to find this year. I got these off of Amazon. I didn't think they were going to arrive until after the holidays, but they did. And I'm thrilled. And they make things look just a little bit more, a little bit more majestic. I have a whole series of these. These are Christmas ornaments. And you'll notice that it says the White House. My husband's Aunt Maggie worked for Senator Robert Kerr, who was uh, an Oklahoma uh, U.S. Senator. She worked for him for many years in Washington, D.C., and she collected these ornaments while she was there, and she often gifted them to some of us. So that's a special ornament. And then a really easy way to decorate something is to just put some of these fairy lights in anything crystal with a pine cone with some greenery with some little baubles anything like that and i think it really is an easy way to decorate and i've tried to pick up on the turquoise and the blues in this montage here so i've got a couple of my special ornaments that were gifted to me by my friend jenny and I put those out here because I don't have a lot of turquoise and blues in, in other areas of my house. Another thing that I did in addition to polishing all of my silver was that, man, I really cleaned all of my crystal too really, really well. And then let me come over here, Stuart, if you would, for those of you that were interested in whether or not I got the cart at Mockingbird Manor, I did. I got the bar cart, and right now it is really pressed into service in just a utilitarian way because I've got all sorts of snacks and things on here that I can use to replenish all of the little special goody containers that I've got throughout the downstairs. But it also serves to kind of hold some things that I'm gonna be taking for our Christmas dinner. Now, one thing every year my family does is we, we come up with a, a signature cocktail for the holidays that we serve on Christmas Day and on Christmas Eve. And this year we're doing uh, white chocolate martinis, Stuart. Does that sound pretty decadent? And I will later, I'll give you the recipe, but I've got the ingredients for that here. I think it's uh, vanilla vodka. These are things I would not normally have around. Some creme de coco, some white chocolate liqueur, and obviously, um, I'll have some kind of sugared, uh, some sparkling sugar around the rim of the glass. Some other things I wanted to point out to you, and I'll put links below in the description. If you can't find the links, if you can't see where they are, then definitely just put it in the comments and we'll get the links to you. But these are some things that this year I could not have done without during the holidays and really I think all year and that's these little fairy lights and I buy these by the box and they just 
are just wonderful. They just give that little bit of additional sparkle, whether you want to wrap your gift with them. Stuart was particularly captivated with that or stick them in a bowl or around a wreath or whatever. They're especially dear. Um, so I couldn't have lived without that. These, Stuart, by the way, Stuart's mom is in the other room and she wants some of these. She saw these and she said, I could use some. So this would make a great stocking stuffer. These are little repair markers for your, your furniture, your wood floors, whatever. I got these at Home, De Home Depot and they have been indispensable if any of your furniture gets nicks or, um, or is old. You bought something at a thrift store and it needed a bit of repair. So these, you guys, are absolutely great. And then lastly... I love these wax candle adapters. These hold the tapers in place. Pretty much you can fit them, you can fit a taper into any size candlestick. But also what they do is they help secure those little trees to the candlesticks. If you want to put a, a bottle brush tree on one of your candlesticks. Uh, I also have, I did not bring them out this year, but I have little topiaries that are all made in miniature pine cones, and I use these on candle, those on candlesticks, and I use these to secure them. So these are wonderful, and I'll try to put a link below. Now, if I haven't worn you out yet, let's go into my breakfast room. Stuart, come this way. And... I'm full of questions this year, you guys, in this video. So again, do you use your Spode China every day during the holidays? And do you keep your table set? I know some people do that because it looks so sweet and so charming. I typically don't do that because there's always too much going on at my house. And sometimes Stuart does some editing and things like that at this table. But I've got it all set for when he arrives. He's requested his favorite chicken chili rice soup that maybe I will make for you in another video. I put, I put the recipe, I think, on one of my, my newsletters not too long ago. It is a resounding family favorite. And let me just say that why wouldn't it be? Because it's got so much cream and cheese in it. Uh, behind you is just a little sideboard that I keep. I, Every morning we use our Spode coffee mugs and then the little arrangement behind it was a thank you gift from Brex. This is one of the items in their holiday gift line and they sent one to me because I've been working with them this year. So I really, I really appreciate that. And then I'm so glad that it cooled off because I was able to light a fire in the fireplace. But first I wanna show you something. This, Stuart so gets me, and this was one of, one of the sweetest things he ever did. And you guys know how this year I was just completely mesmerized by all of these beautiful leaves. And this one, when we were, oops, when we were shooting outside, this one was by the back door and it was a perfect leaf and Stuart got that and he said, look, this leaf found you. And he very gingerly picked it up and was just very cautious so that he wouldn't crush it and bring it into me. Here, I've got a, a wooden ornament down. But I just thought that was the sweetest thing, Stuart. I just, lo I just loved that. So it will, it will hold pride of place here along with my little Danish wooden Christmas trees that were a gift. And then I've got more of those battery operated candles. And then if you were coming to visit with me, I would invite you to come and sit by my fire in one of the two chairs, mom and dad chairs that we have right here looking into the kitchen. This was my mother-in-law's favorite place to sit when she would come and visit. I've probably told you this story before, but she would sit here and we would chat while I would be cooking in the kitchen. And it's one of my happiest memories of her. So on my mantle, um, last year, and if you wanna see what it looked like last year, go back and look at the holiday video of my kitchen last year. Last year was all about um, citrus fruits and making pomanders and dried sliced oranges and this year the inspiration was these fabulous 
pomegranates that I saw at a farmer's stand when Hubs and I were taking a little road trip. And they, I just loved the way they look. They're beautiful and they will dry beautifully just like this if we don't consume them first because that's a really festive touch I think to have for drinks and salads during the holidays. But someone asked me in a comment, how do I dry the pomegranates? I don't do anything. I just leave them be and they dry on their own. These are two Christmas trees that I keep from year to year. And then I just made a little bouquet of pine cones to serve as, oh, just kind of an additional flourish to suspend from these pots, which I love. And I got these, by the way, at Home Depot. They had a whole series of these that had kind of a primitive look to them. I just loved the way they looked. And I got some of these because a girl can never have, can never have too many pots. And then I want to show you one last kind of a personal thing. This, this is my husband's little workspace here. But he keeps this here because this was a gift from my son Johnny. Both of these were. And it reminds him of Johnny while Johnny's away. And then my husband is just a fanatic for wooden boats, for old wooden boats. And so he has a couple of his own Christmas ornaments that are that are small replicas of some of his wooden boats that he has. And he likes, he, he requests that I keep them there by his spot. And then I will end on this very, very happy note because it was a wonderful year. I got two new, I mean, just, I could not be more fortunate, wonderful daughters-in-law. And this was their holiday card, one of my son's holiday cards for this year. So thank you guys so much. My kitchen is kind of a mess, Stuart. Don't focus on it too much because there is just lots of activity getting ready to happen in my kitchen. But I wanted to share with you some of the joy that I'm experiencing from having my son home. It's been two over two years since we have seen him. And while I'm very disappointed that his new bride can't come with him, she has, has to work. She's got an, a new job and she needed to stay home in Singapore over the holidays and she'll be with her family. But I'm thrilled to have my son Johnny home. So from my house to yours, I have so much to be thankful for. I hope that you have loved ones coming home. And if you don't, I have been there before. I know how it is, but still there is much to savor from just the joy of the holiday spirit. So Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas, Stuart. Well, it's December, it's the holidays, and if I could, I would welcome all of you in person into my home, but that's obviously not going to happen. So instead, I'm gonna do kind of a little virtual tour, starting with this one room. And then later on, I'll show you other areas of my house decorated for the holidays. I hope you guys enjoy this. A lot of you have requested to see the inside of my 1935 old Tudor home. And if you do, make sure to comment below, um, hit notifications, show that you like this kind of content, and we'll try to do more of the same. And more importantly, if you think someone else would like it, we're all just so alone now during COVID. If you think someone else would like it, please share it with them because um, maybe we can welcome them into our little community along with us. So this is my side porch. You all have seen it styled for the growing season, but right now it's kind of styled for Christmas. Now this year, because of the ice storm, I'm not doing a lot of outside decorating. I'm not putting up my traditional wreaths with lights because there's just too much work that still needs to be done on the house, on the trees. But I do have this little outside oasis just outside of our entry that my husband and I, my family, my friends, Stuart, that we use all of the time. This is our little side, uh, side entrance. And it's also wonderful, you guys, especially on sunny days like today. It's 
just gorgeous out because in the winter time I can bring out my topiaries that are light starved and on days where the temperature is not too extreme they love coming out here and getting a little bit of sunshine before I bring them back in and use them as part of my holiday decor. So I've got a little lantern here. I've got some of my paper whites here that are getting a dose of sunshine as well. And then just a little spot where I can sit and open my mail on a beautiful day like today. And I know you guys are gonna ask, years ago I got this pillow and blanket ensemble from Land's End. So come on in. my squeaky squeaky doors. So since I don't have a lot of my other wreaths, typically I have wreaths hanging on every window on the lower level. But this year, again, because of some maintenance work, I've just got a real one with my indispensable fairy lights. Um, I'm gonna do a video on things that I find absolutely indispensable over the holidays, and these would be right up there on my list. I love those little fairy lights. Now come on in. This, most of the time we just kind of refer to it as the entryway. I think its official term would have been the morning room or maybe even the music room. It's not a large space. Uh, when we first bought the house, all, by the way, all of the, the trim and the woodwork in my home is real mahogany. And when we first moved in, this house was in dire need of renovation and the ceiling was actually mirrored and it was pretty hideous. So we framed it out and we put in mahogany stained panels so that it more matches the aesthetic of our house. Excuse the little beeps you may hear because our alarm system was another thing that kind of went wonky with the ice storm and we're still waiting for them to come out and help us with that. So if you hear that beep, that's what it is. Then of course, what would the holidays be without my beloved topiaries? So the topiaries, as I said, kind of go in and out to my porch so they get adequate light. But for short periods, they do just fine here. And my inspiration this year has been, you know, sometimes it's, well, it can be a different thematic that serves as your inspiration for a whole year. And for me, I don't know why, but my inspiration was a form. And the form was this very tall, thin, conical shape. It is my new favorite form for topiaries and it had even inspired my Christmas tree, which I'll show you a little bit later. So these are concrete faux bois planters. And I got this one, I think at Home Depot, this one I got in line and then I online and then I've just mulched them in beautiful foliage that I spray painted and spray paint is another one of my indispensable things to always have on hand for the holidays. And I'll show you a little bit later how I kind of put this together. This is a burnished amber and then this I hope you guys are keeping track of these little tips. These are staked taper candle holders. And I got these online off of Amazon and I'll try to put a link below. Uh, they're used a lot in Scandinavia and I discovered them last year and I just love them for this time of year. Now they're against a backdrop of this beautiful frosty glass this this it has great glazing all of this was original to the house and these are individual paned folding windows so if i want a little bit more light in i can let it in and it might be called the morning room because this is on the east side of my house and this area, this space is just flooded with beautiful sunlight in the morning. Um, if I have visitors over or I'm having just a meeting with one other person, a lot of times this is where we will meet because I just love that morning sunshine. It's really, really beautiful. 
Now, when, um, when we bought the house also, there was a door missing here. And I think at one time there had been a door here, so we replaced it and we put in beveled a beveled glass door. And Stuart might give you a little hint of what's beyond there. That's my living room. And I'll do a little tour of that space later. Now, all of my, my rooms, but this one in particular gets a seasonal makeover and not just with kind of my topiaries and greenery and Christmas decor, but it gets a makeover in another way. As soon as the weather turns cold, out comes all of my plaid blankets. I have a number of different plaid Scottish rugs, they would be called. Some of them literally came from Scotland when we went there visiting and out goes the plaid, and you can see what was here formerly. Underneath here were, was my summer version. But once it gets cold, I like to switch these out, and I like the color palette of it, and I like the, the vibe, the kind of Ralph Lauren-ish vibe that it gives to the room. Now, contributing to that are, some of you may want to know about my antlers, um, and those things, those were largely a part of my husband's brother's collection. He was a naturalist and a lot of these belonged to him and they serve a dual purpose as a hat stand or a hat holder, I guess, for us. And any kind of straw hats, summery chapeaus that may have been there before, <laughs> Uh, my sun hats are now replaced with all of my winter hat wear and my husband's winter hat wear. There's that beep again. Um, we should have a drinking game. Every time you hear the beep, you take, you take a shot. Um, and this is where I kind of have my grab and go hats. Um, one of my favorite touches, I mix it up probably like you. I mix things up every year in terms of my holiday decor. But one thing I put up every single year and it couldn't be easier is I love suspending one of these inexpensive dollar store Santa hats that I've added bells to from Sir Richard Burton, Sir Francis Richard Burton, who is one of my husband's heroes, a great adventurer and explorer. And then I just tuft in greenery and holly. And I love the way that looks. And I put that up there every year because I just like the whimsy against how staid and solemn he looks. Um, the same thing happens over here with the coat rack. So out come the, the sweaters, any kind of our summery things, and this is where all of the winter stuff is hung. And there is another antler appointment that belonged to my husband that also is sometimes used as a coat rack. Now, this area, um, we sometimes also refer to it as a bar as our bar because this is where we keep our other holiday essentials. Um, this is where our guests make drinks when they come in and it's kind of all here and pretty easily accessible. All of this was built in when we bought the house. This leaded glass window, this was here. Um, all of this beveled glass in here in these cabinets was here. All of this original uh, mahogany woodwork, this built in was original to the house, as were the brass poles and everything. And I like it because it's, it's lit and it's a nice place for whatever the season is to put some kind of seasonal accoutrement out here to kind of greet visitors when they come in. So I, so I really like it. Um, a little bit more, a lot of you ask, well, where do I get my furniture? Where do I get those kinds of things? Most of them actually uh, were gifted or, or belonged to family members. Um, I was single for a long time before I 
finally found a husband and I did have some things when I was single that I brought to this house. This drop leaf beautiful wooden table belonged to my mom. She passed away last year in May and this was in the entry hall of our family home. So that makes it a special uh, piece to me. I really love it. Um, and then I've got some other little biblos and things. This belonged to my husband's father. So like you, it's not unusual at all or even special uh, to me, but I, I just like having those kinds of things that speak to me of memories and, and the past, but in a very good way. Uh, over here in this corner, this is a tight space, you guys. It seems maybe kind of silly for me to be doing this in such a small room, but nevertheless, this is how we live our life. Um, it's got a very English flavor to it, so I thought, Another reason you might enjoy looking at it. My husband's fishing bags are here, his fishing hats, um, our water bottle carrier that we got at an art fair, leather. Um, we've got some walking sticks in here that belonged to so some dear me family members and this basket belonged to my mom. It was always kept on our front side porch at home. Uh, so this is kind of a, uh, again, kind of one of those very English vignettes that I, that I like. Uh, and by the way, the brass hat holder, the brass, um, what do you call that? The brass hook, the brass hook hanger, <laughs> words escape me. That was a, a, a wedding gift. And I just love it because it fit perfectly right there. Um, this table I love in this spot. Again, if we're entertaining at the bar, I can set out all of the glassware and everything here, maybe with some appetizers or goodies. This is called the Essex Butler Tray, and I got this from Gardner Supply. It was a great price. It was under a hundred dollars. It's got a removable tray. It looks fabulous indoors or out. I obviously like to stage topiary on it. And as you can see, continuing with that faux bois theme, I've got another faux bois container here with one of my myrtle topiaries that you might recognize. And then Again, being systematic and rhythmic and harmonious with what I have on the table directly across from it, I've got some of these same spray painted pine gones and leaves. I have done this in the past in copper, I've done it in gold, I've done it in galvanized metal, and hopefully later I can show you some of those kinds of things. Um, watch out during the holidays, or really any time of year, if I've got a spray paint can at the ready, because I have often threatened to spay, spray paint anything that gets in my way, including my husband. Uh, so those are just some of the things here that make this room special to me. It gets a lot of use. It reminds me of just welcoming family and friends, and I, I love that. Oh, one more touch, one final touch here, you guys. I typically always at the holidays hang something in this window. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous window, and it's either a wreath or something special. This year, it's a huge branch that I've spray painted in that same deep rich color with holly and greenery and cuttings from my garden. So please comment below. Thank you for coming into my home. Happy holidays. And here's a cup to you. Oh my gosh, you guys, you talk about a wonderful Christmas Eve. I'm here with my friend, George. Yes. How long have we known each other, George? At least 20 years. At, at least, least 20 years, which ages both of us because it's... <laughs> I, I I'm know. older. Well, it's been about 20 years since I started doing a four-year garden segment on Channel 4. Mm -hmm. And 
you and I are still there doing it. The other yes. people have kind of come and gone, but you and I still do the For Your Garden segment. Yes. And it's been kind of sad. We have missed one another because for, I, I know, I know, because for, <laughs> gosh, the past several years, I've come into the studio. Mm -hmm. And George and I, oh my goodness, we would visit and we would cut up and we would have fun. And we're going to share a, a couple of stories, yes. a couple of really behind the scenes <laughs> stories of of the chaos yes, that would you go. Won't believe. <laughs> you won't believe. And maybe you don't want to know some of it <laughs> that would go on behind the scenes. But because of COVID, I haven't been able to come into the studio. And so George lives just within spitting distance. George and Miranda live within spitting distance of me. And though this is the first time I have seen your Christmas magic, Yes. And George is extremely handy. And one of the things that we would visit about <laughs> in between segments was mm -hmm. all of the projects that he had going on. And especially during COVID, when we haven't been able to see each other, mm -hmm. you so sweetly send me <laughs> little videos and <laughs> pictures of your Thanksgiving of all of the holidays and stuff. And yep. we share that back and forth and look at this little magic, magical scene. I feel you and I were trying to come up with the name of it, like I'm in FAO Schwartz. Yeah, but yeah, I, I go with that. Kind of like that toy store in mm -hmm. in New York City. Okay, so the Polar the Polar Bear Express. Yes. <laughs> okay, the Polar Bear, kind of a between the two. Okay, so tell me about kind of your inspiration for this and how long you've been doing this. Well, I've been doing it for years because I change it up every year, but. This, uh, I was at home, at home, yeah, and I noticed a pet of uh, polar bear. It was one standing straight up. I wanted it, but the price was kind of high, yeah. So I went and picked up the little small one, yeah. And I said, Oh, I can, that's, that's okay. And as I picked that one up, a gentleman walked behind me and picked up the big one, and I said, No, no they can't <laughs> break up the family. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to call every at home just to find another big bear. Big bear. Be because it, w it just wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the same. And I was talking about some of the displays and stuff I have in my house, George. And you know from my displays that I would do on, on the foyer garden set, mm -hmm. I love to tell little stories yes. with things and obviously you have done that and yes. this is just it is just absolutely magical i love that santa has his his miniature reindeer and actually i mean i'm on the other side of mama claus what is she she is holding a candle and, and a wreath. yeah and a wreath and playing heart hark the heralds yes let's be quiet for a minute so we can hear Okay, if I didn't have the Christmas spirit before, I, I really have the Christmas spirit now. This is absolutely charming. So talk to me a little bit about, now I, I did I t say that you were the cameraman there? I would call you El Director because he would, he would tell me what to do during the bumps and what looked good on set and what didn't look good. But talk to me in addition to your camera skills about your engineering skills and how you constructed this. And and it looks out his fabulous picture window at one of our local parks. And this, is this where you play tennis all yes, the time? Yes, I play tennis out there all the time. So one of the things that we always talk about is what tournaments you're playing mm -hmm. in. And the so- The ghetto classic. Yeah, and so I, I don't know why I thought you were playing at, um, oh, Will Rogers Park. I thought that's where you played your tournaments. Anyhow, I digress. Well, I played there too for tournaments too. Okay. Well, I, play, I played at any tournament that throughout, I would go to. And uh, let me also say, you guys, this is truly a Christmas miracle, But I, because I don't think in the entire time I have known you, in 20 years I've ever known you to be on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and when I called and begged him to do this, he said, he said he was on vacation and I about fell over. <laughs> so that is truly a Christmas miracle. Okay, so tell us about the construction of this. Well, first I put in my mind that I was gonna build this set with the bears and I had to get it up high enough to look over the window right. and so people could see it as they drive by. I had the sleigh, the Santa, 
and I had to buy some trees because I wanted some trees in the background and I wanted the snow and everything. So I built it up high enough so we can see it outside the window and make sure that people can enjoy it this way I do because I really enjoy it. My wife found the little present boxes there and, and fit perfectly with the colors and everything. Yeah. So it's just a work in progress. I add to stuff that I keep over the years and I just keep it going. Well, and what I love about it is it's just the right amount. You haven't done, you know, you haven't done too, too much. much. You haven't gone overboard with all of, with too much stuff going on. And that way I think the drama of it and the term of it really travels down to the right. street. Mm -hmm. So when people go, this, hey. you're kind of on the way to downtown. Mm -hmm. So when people are going downtown or they're going to my neighborhood or where that, whatever, they can come by this. But um, speaking of detail and, and <laughs> simplicity, let's talk about the opposite of that because I have wanted to see this for <laughs> years. Yes. I have been hearing about this for years and is there anything more Christmas spirit like, more traditional, let's just pretend like we're going back in time in an old Christmas movie and I want to go and see your train set. Yes, it's, oh. it was my child's train set. He grew past it and I loved it. <laughs> so I kept it going. Oh my I gosh. I kept building on it. And that is an understatement. <laughs> and here's a, here's a little um, inside scoop of, of a lot of the people at Channel 4. A number of them are really a bunch of grown-up kids and they're obsessed with train sets, yes. including Mike, Mike Morgan, Morgan. The, the weatherman. Who else up there? Uh, Oliver Murray, who's retired now, but he's just as big as into it. He actually pulled me into the, the digital age. Of, of, of the train complexities of it mm -hmm. well it's absolutely brilliant so we're we're not yeah let's move on we're not going <laughs> to hold you in suspense anymore let's go see this incredible train set well if we're going to start any place in this magical village i would i would practically call it a village i guess you would call it georgetown georgetown <laughs> <laughs> named after yourself and this is incredible. Thank you. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. So when you when you started this, you said it was when your son was little. So little being what age? What age about do most? About four. About, about four, mm -hmm. okay. And it's obviously expanded and yes. <laughs> the Georgetown has grown <laughs> over time and broken the bonds of of where it was originally, but can you talk a little bit about like where it started and then how you decided to add on to it over the years? Yes, it started with the trains over here, which was Jamel's, my Okay, son. okay. And it started with a circle. I put it around the Christmas tree. Of course you did, <laughs> of course you did. When he grew out of it, I decided to make it longer, make it a long circle. And from there, I decided to put a mountain in between the circles. Then I decided to make a L shape and extend it and add buildings and plants and trees and put all kind of machinery on it that, like they were always working. And I would have fussed at you if you didn't add plants and trees, George. <laughs> but I mean, look at it, it. Parts of it remind me of Colorado. Yes. Because of the way that the, some of the trees almost look suspended, and you've got good diversity in your in your tree varieties. I like that, and the detail of like the little brush pile up yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. How cute is that? So would you just? Would you see a picture and then try to replicate it with pieces no. or you would just tell your own little stories? It's all mental. As I put it together, it was nothing, no picture anywhere. I just mentally just decided to do it. Stuart, can you show how of the original train set there's a light that goes on and off and it's kind of hard to convey through the camera, but it feels very alive. Yes because when 
you look at different components of it closely, you can see this is the newsman in you. This yes. is the cameraman in you. Yes. There's like different crime scenes here. <laughs> And oh, oh, look at the Person, little yeah, look dog. at the little dog. Oh man, Person only. man down. <laughs> this was a bad accident. <laughs> a bad accident. You've got oh, look at the little man over there t doing a survey. Yes. The detail is absolutely breathtaking. Down to the way that you even like the front loaders and the construction pieces you have material in the front loaders yeah. you have helicopters suspended yeah. over and military base on the back side military because you were in the military no. is, is you but your son no nope my uncle your uncle okay and he tried his best to get me to go <laughs> well I knew you had some I knew you had a family yeah. connection so there's a military base on the other side and then this is just so smart and yet it had to be pointed out to me that you've got a backdrop <laughs> Stuart thinks that's funny that you, ha you have a backdrop of a mirror to show the complexity on that side yes <laughs> and all of that is newspaper and foam did you make that? Yes. <laughs> Newspaper and phone. Wow. <laughs> and this is just... Little just grass that you buy at a little harvest store. Little harvest store, store things, mm -hmm. okay. And here, who's sitting on that little Well, branch? that's a little story there. Uh, Oliver Murray gave me that. It's a man uh, taking a break. Oh. <laughs> and there's a bear coming up behind him while he's taking a break. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so dear. <laughs> that is just so dear. And you, you've got, you, you obviously are a man, are a man that really likes your trucks. Cause yes. you've got a, a wide, wide variety, variety of, of different trucks. kinds of trucks and vans. I don't see a Fiat on here. Oh, I'm, I'm George, sorry. George, you I'm need sorry. to dot feels <laughs> underrepresented. <laughs> But you said this, you, you, you're... I just put that in last night. It's a town hall and a police department. Because... I'm a police Because officer. you are... George has about, I say 10 jobs, he's got about six jobs. Six jobs. Realistically, he has about six jobs, which the fact, that, truly, this is a Christmas miracle that he's not working. Oh, and look over the there. I did not fire. see the building on fire. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> how how do you decide so okay so as you acquire these things you're going to a physical store mm -hmm. to get them yes and where is a physical store that in like in Oklahoma City or in it's a, surely a special Whistle Stop thing. is on Britain Road yeah I know that one is, yeah. really yes Whistle Stop and so when you get there you, I the, just you're, look around and see something that I like and mentally put in my mind of where I want to put it. Everything in here is totally mentally also. So you don't go in thinking that like, oh, I really like that fire scene or whatever. You go in and it just you, Catch my eye. It catches your eye and then before you purchase it, you think of where you could put it in yes. the context of, of, this it, yeah. of everything else that's going on. Yes. Now, some of these, like, these That's are... That's a Ford plant. It's a what? Ford motor plant. A Ford oh, motor God. plant. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look at the... And I love the juicy fruit. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, oh, here, we've got a refrigerator truck. <laughs> and... Like I'm a drone flying over us. I, I know. And like I say, the complexity of all of this stuff, Stuart, you are, your little boy is really yeah. coming out. My dad had all this stuff, so it is memories. Well, and, the buses over there, is, I meant to realize that there's been a tour guide, a tour group <laughs> coming in to visit the Ford plant. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's, okay, if that's the four, 
Ford plant. What is this? Do I see a Chevy that's up there a, right next to the Ford plant? That's a place where they store <laughs> all uh -oh. of the, store all of the parts for the motors and stuff. They build them in this plant and they store it in that plant. So that's why they got the trucks over there backing up, picking up the parts, and then they pull them out and take them to all the other distributor places or dealerships. So, so why is there a Chevy in front of the Ford factory? Because people work <laughs> at different places. <laughs> Look at all of the cute little convertibles. <laughs> Very cool. I mean, what an imagination you have. Yeah. And then the the city folk meet the country folk. Yes. Over you got, here. <laughs> you got and the, you've got livestock. Livestock, horses, cows, little farm. And so I asked you earlier if you ever like saw a picture of something and you thought, oh, I'm going to replicate that in my train set, and you said no, nope. it just all comes from the own, the own story that you're telling yourself mm -hmm. and yep. how it comes together. Oh, and if, oh, the plant. oil well, I just it now moved. saw the oil well. Yeah. Believe it or not, the chopper blades spin. I just don't have the batteries on right now. Oh my gosh. And where did you get the, the four KFOR truck? I actually bought a truck and painted that. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. I had one of the uh, graphic art guys make me the little pictures and I put it on there and made it make look just like Channel 4. Because you don't sleep. No. Because you, because you never sleep. No. Okay, of all, all of this, what, what is your favorite thing? Actual just running the trains. Just running the train. It's it's the experience of it. Yeah. Now, I don't want to be too crass, but I you know, I know lots of people are going to absolutely be captivated by this. <laughs> and I know you've made a lot of these things, mm -hmm. so your time is worth a lot, but what kind of investment is how much insurance would you have to have on something like this? Because well, I've got to imagine it's valuable. It is valuable. The time would probably be 10 years in de developing it yeah. because I would take something and I would work on it all night long. If I got off of work, I would start working on it and wouldn't stop until like 5 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. And from a financial investment, does, is, like, is each part really pricey? Is it something you really have to save up for and make sure that you get that special piece? Uh, if you are into it, yeah. price doesn't matter. <laughs> perfect. It's the perfect answer. It's kind of like gardening. Yeah. When, when you want to have something, and it also sounds to me like when you get in the zone. You're in the zone. You're in it. That's a very good analogy. <laughs> yeah, I, and I can so see how you can get in the zone. And the other thing that I love about this is it's, you know, these train sets is kind of an inner world mm -hmm. because the gift that you give to passers-by and everybody mm -hmm. that's in the park from yep. the scene that you've got that you can see through your your front window. But this is just, it, it is just... The kid a, in me. <laughs> it is it the kid in you. It stays there. <laughs> so does your son still, is he as enthusiastic about as you are or... No, he, he has other things <laughs> that he's but he loves the train set he comes up and he looks at it and he want to play with it and he knows that that was his and that's what started it oh, that is so, <laughs> so precious poured he is still <laughs> yeah well and it's a legacy for him and you said you have lots of nieces, nieces and nephews, nephews yeah and they love to come by and watch it yeah because i'm surprised you hear about little boys all of the time and all the old movies that about train sets were always about little boys but I can't imagine a little girl would go crazy with something yes, like this. Yes, they do. They do. It would just be so fun to decorate and create and what an imaginative device mm -hmm. for a child. Yep, yeah, because they point out every little item that we don't normally Even look see? at. They would be close up and they, look at that little horsey, look at the little <laughs> truck. <laughs> that is just, just excited. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. Well, because it's their scale. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just closer to their world. Right. Well, this was the best Christmas Eve gift ever you could give me, well, my thank friend. You. In thank addition you. to getting to see you, you know I'll be back. Yes. yes. And this is so fun. And by the way, my, my sister, had, she just got married. Mm. And my new brother-in-law. Congratulations. Yes, is also into trains. Oh, so when talk. they come to town, I must, yes. I must bring them over. Yes. Well, I'm sorry that I won't be in the studio on, on Christmas Eve, the real Christmas Eve. But okay. I know, but I'll be back. No, right. I'll be back. If, if nothing else, you come and you and Stuart can be co-cameramen in my backyard. There you go. There How's you that? go. We'll do that. Okay. Merry <laughs> yes. Christmas. Thank you. Same to you.